Hi guys, it's Betty from Awaken Possibilities. I'm just, ah, Sandy just made it in. I thought I was like, okay, we're running a little late and um, thought I'd get started, but I'm gonna add her to the stream and here we go. Hey, Sandy. How are you, Betty? I'm good, how are you doing? Good, running a little Hi. late today, but that's okay. Yesterday was a really busy day uh, working with energy and helping people clear and uh, so it's, it's all good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm hoping I am louder today because I know somebody said that you were much louder than me, but I've got my mic now and hopefully that works. Fingers crossed. And I can hear you fine. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. I know you could hear me fine last time too. And normally it works out well, but you have a much louder voice than I do. I think I have a lower octave or something. Like I'm a very, um, when I speak, it's very, I have a deep voice. Mm -hmm. So it comes off as louder, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But. Who knows? But Who knows? hopefully the mic helps those that bothered that I was a little bit quieter than you. And uh, let's dive into it. I think this is a great, uh, just so everybody knows, Sandy and I got together on the weekend. And we started chatting and this came up and it was like, this is what we need to speak about. And it's about forgiveness. And do we need to forgive everybody? And no, we don't. No, we don't. No, we and there's, don't. So, there's so many um, biases put into the system that are in favor of abusers, that they cut abusers slack, but they don't necessarily uh, support anybody who's been hurt by abusers. And it doesn't matter if they work in the system, if it's societal, if it's in the family structure or whatever, but abuse hurts. And it's the abusers who need to be told time to step off, Jack. Yes. Yes. I a hundred percent agree with you. And like I said, I was going to look it up and see if this is in the, you know, in the scriptures anywhere. And I did find, um, I did find, I think this is a good place to start and then we can dive into it. And let me just share my screen. Cause I did, um, I was playing with this before. So, okay. Why? All right. I have to switch that. Okay. All right, let's go to this. Allow. There we go. So here is out of Luke. It says, so watch yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke them. If they repent, forgive them. So even the sin against you seven times and they come back and repent, you must forgive them. But... I think that that what that really means is because the scripture just before it is actually interesting. It's the one about if anybody hurts uh, one of the littlest. So a child. The ones? That you, yeah. Yes. That you would put a millstone around their neck and throw them into the whatever. Um, so that comes just before it. And like I was saying to you, it's like this is why, you know, even though I go back to the Bible and to Gnostic texts and different things, because there are some gems in there, but you can see when you read it, everything is disjointed. You know something was taken out and it was reorganized because yeah. it doesn't flow like it yeah. should flow. Um, and anyway, but if somebody is not sorry for what they have done, and I mean truly not saying, yeah, yeah, mom told me to say sorry, um, so I'm doing it, that they're not sorry. But if they have a true from their heart that they realize they've done something wrong, and come to you and say, listen, Sandy, I am so sorry. Everything I did was wrong. Then right. you can forgive. But the chances of that happening are pretty slim. Yes. <clears throat> and what we're finding is more and more. And a lot of the people I'm working with right now are finding that family members have betrayed them. I, I know that story. I just uh, <laughs> gone through it myself. And you know what? You get to the point. You, you've been through it. You get to the point. You get tired of hearing that you're fucking stupid. To not know what they did was wrong. Yeah. And, and, and I'm getting this in text messages from friends. I'm getting it. Clients are telling me stories. I love you. But that's another way of saying they're not sorry. <laughs> I yeah. love you. But, you know, think like me. You know, so there's so much passive aggressive nonsense going on right now. So I really and I always was about the individual standing up for themselves, standing into the power. And this is just another example of how we do it. Right. Absolutely. And why we do it? Because they're not sorry. They're lying. Look at the mental health industry. 
Her people, hurt people. They need victims or they don't have an industry. If people stopped hurting people, you wouldn't have to go in and deal with your psychological problems because you wouldn't have been hurt and you probably wouldn't have accumulated them over time, right? right. And my, the, the latest, and I know I've talked about this before, it's not what happens to you, it's how you handle it. Let's talk about the COVID lockdowns that are destroying people's lives. It's not what happens to you, it's how you handle it. That's a mental health monkey. You should bitch slap right there and then just punch her up. I actually want to say something to that. And because people are saying, oh, because of the C word, because <laughs> right. we can't really say that. Yes, sorry. Uh, or the V word. But no, it's the V word is the other one. Um, but the C word. Oh, because of that. No, it's not because of that. It's because our government decided to lock us down and do this insanity over and over and over again to us for a year. That's what causes mental health issues. <laughs> absolutely. And, you know, I, I was like, okay, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. And it's like, right. well, they, aren't they doing exactly that? If it hasn't flattened the curve after a year of doing the same shit, how is it going to change if you do it again? Right. That's what abuse patterns are like. They go through the yeah. abuse, they build up, they go through the abuse, whatever the lockdown or a physical fight, if it's domestic violence or an emotional dispute. And then they go into the honeymoon phase. Oh, we're going to normalize everything and treat everybody like we love you. And then once you get in again, they're going to turn on and do it again. So I had, I had a friend over yesterday and I, I could read her. I could read her this week and I'm like, are we getting together Thursday? Because I think you need a clearing, right? She's like, Oh, I still need a clearing. And I went through and I showed her some of the literature that I'm writing about what abuse cycles are, what abuse patterns are. And she's like, oh my God, this is exactly what I'm going through. So it's not, it might have a different flavor to it because it's within each different family structure or it's within the different government levels, but mm -hmm. it's the same, the patterns are the same. And when they get you to do something, if you won't do it, then they turn around and shame you. And then when you do, so, so you say no and you hold a boundary and then the next time they come back and they do something that they know you'd like or that, that shows that they love you. And as soon as they do, they go, hey, will you take out the garbage again? <laughs> and they try to get you back in the same pattern. And this is why society needs to grow up. We start to see these patterns are through and through family structures, government structures, employment structures, it was it was quite a fun session last night because you know we're clearing some pretty serious dark energies like emotions like hate and resentment and we're laughing the whole way through it and we're laughing the whole way through it because you realize it's insane you're carrying it because you're caring that's the only reason you're carrying it because you're nice yeah you don't have to be nice to people who are mean to you or rude to you or hurt you or sabotage you or talk about you behind your back you All know what i mean stuff. yeah All that stuff. absolutely and it's it's time, even if it's a family member or a close family member or somebody you've known for your entire life and it feels like, oh my gosh, what will I do without them? I, you know, shut I've the door. I've known them for door. 20 years. Yeah. Shut, shut the, door. the door because you don't need that bullshit anymore. We're yeah. walking into a new world. We really are. I don't know if you feel it, but. Totally. I feel like something, we're on the precipice of something big right now. I mean, it is like, I don't know, it's in the air. It's brewing. It's, <laughs> it is. I don't know when it's going to explode, but it's coming. I can it's feel coming. it with every, and I say it and I'm getting goosebumps. So yes, yes uh, it's You're coming. saying it, my, my, my curtains, my, um, I have, I have fringes for one set of curtains here and the wind starts picking up and they start moving. So whenever anything profound is said, the wind picks up around here. It's really an interesting place. No, but them. I can feel it like to my toes that something is brewing. I actually believe this is our last lockdown. I believe it's um, nobody's locking down. No one's listening right now no, in Ontario. This Canada. is the last government lockdown. I mean, the stores are closed. Um, I spent my entire week. I wanted to do a video. I don't even remember what I had something all planned, but I was out running around all day trying to get, or every day trying to get the last few things that I know are non-essential, but essential but, <laughs> for yes. me. Right. And, and I, I did the same. I went out on, on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday or Tuesday, I can't remember what day. And I'm in a store minding my own business. I'm looking for pajamas. I haven't bought any pajamas in a couple of years. And I thought, you know what, see if there's what if I like something that's out there. And I'm in the store and I'm in the back of the store, like not, well, not like the far wall compared to where the cash register is. And there's a sales clerk talking to me. And this woman walks in and looks at me and goes, You need a mask. 
I go, you need to mind your own fucking business. And then she turns around showing me how tough she is. And I said, I'm tired of stupid women falling for every little thing they tell you in the media that you go along with, you know, like plants need carbon dioxide so that they can create oxygen for you to breathe. And she goes, oh, I'm stupid, am I? And I said, yeah, you are stupid. And I said, the problem is there's many women like you are stupid. And then I called her a Karen. And for my friend's name, Karen, I didn't mean this against you. <laughs> and, and, and it was funny. And I think I probably told her she was a stupid bitch or whatever, right? And I'm just, because if you're going to give it to me, I'm going to give it to you. And she's standing here thinking her shit doesn't stink. This is for all of you female feminazis who think because you have a thought in your head that you're intelligent because your lips work doesn't mean your mind is engaged. So... Anyways, uh, well, I'm going to be honest. I got told I should be wearing a mask in line. And I said, I'm standing outside in fresh air, social distance from everybody. What's real problem? Like, I'm not wearing anything outside. Thank you very much. And to know, like, so you, can be, you can be nice about what? it. And she just looked at me horrified. I was just like, step you stand off. Up. You only stand up no. once, right? Step off. And the sales clerk turns around and goes, she's defending herself. You called her a Karen. And I'm thinking of all the things we just said to each other. That's all, I, that's all you got is I called her a Karen. You came away with. Karen. Yeah. So, so, and then I try to leave the store and she goes, you're coming toward me. I go, I'm leaving the store and you're in my way. And she moves two feet away from me. So then I'm okay to walk past her two feet, but she can yell across me across, uh, uh, across the store, yell at me across the store for not wearing a mask. It's like, ladies, you're not thinking. I'm just, no. you can't think thinking. You. You can't fix stupid. You can't fix stupid, right? You can't fix stupid. I've been saying this for months. And then they call the security guards. Oh, this is serious. A year ago, nobody would have cared. Me walking in a mall, nobody would have given me a second look. But now, all of a sudden, they call the security guards, and they have to come up and ask me about it. And I'm like, I don't owe you an explanation. The people at the mall entrance allowed, allowed me in. They screened me like we're all good. And he's like, yeah, I do so have the right. And it's like, yeah, I'm watching all the, whether it's estrogen or testosterone or all the hormones that are out of whack, I don't know, right? But well, then I'm I walking. Think, I think we're seeing like this even bigger divide where people are starting to figure it out. I was in one store where the girl was like, yeah, we're locking down tomorrow. Um, this is all bullshit. You know, she's tired of it. And it was like, all right, I'm over it. And then I go somewhere else and they're double masked with Pfizer's. And, and they're excited about the lockdown because Ford's going to announce today. And I'm like, you probably weigh 80 pounds more than you should. You're not in good shape. You don't look after yourself. You're not obviously you're not critically thinking because you're not going to have probably a paycheck going forward. Yeah. And it's like, oh, they're so excited. And, and they gave me a hard time about the mask. And I said, I, I have a medical exemption. I don't owe you an explanation. And I will social distance. They didn't come up to me in the store. I didn't go up to them. But it's like they're getting off on the lockdowns. They're getting off on it. They are. And it's a it's power crazy. trip. Like it's, you know, these weaklings that are power tripping. I hear you. We got comments I there. love that, Terry. <laughs> stupid people are too stupid to realize they're stupid. I love that. It's absolutely right. Um, it, I, yes, and, and that's an interesting conversation because was I talking to you about that yesterday? I think it was somebody else I was talking to. Really, they, they don't know that they don't know. They're so stupid that they don't know they don't know. So we expect them to be able to articulate their thoughts and be able to use critical thinking. No. But they don't, a, a friend of mine is saying, people need to look in the mirror, but it's like, they don't know what they're looking at. They don't see, and so they go inside. But the kicker is, Sandy, I'm gonna say, they're, they don't wanna see the evidence that proves otherwise either. So it's yes. not that they don't know what they don't know, it's they don't want to know what they don't it know. It can be lazy and cowardice, all kinds of things yes, combined. Yes, you're, you're seeing, it's not just that they're, they're, they don't know, they don't want to know the truth. They don't yes. want to see what's really going on behind the curtain. They're not interested. Do you know what I mean? Totally. And, um, they're choosing to be stupid. They're choosing. And, you know, I, I've talked to people who actually know they're not going to stand up and fight over what's going on in the lockdowns. They're okay to die this time around. And I'm like, really? But it's their choice. I'm yeah. not going to try to convince them to stay on the planet and fight for what's right. And, and I don't believe we're going to fight for what's right. I think things are going to come in that are really going to show us different ways of being. So a change is going to happen if we can hang in there. That's what I believe. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't need to be right. And I don't need to be wrong. It's a non-player right? character. Somebody was asking NPCs. They're non-player characters. That's interesting. <laughs> I've heard that one before. <laughs> oh, I have. I was actually, and I'm so glad you did that because I was like, what was the acronym for these people? And it's like, is it 
I, I, I was like trying to remember what it was, but when he's the NPC, I'm like, there you go, Terry not has it. characters. <laughs> They're all like this, the periphery, not uh, the ones that are actually like, we're leading the charge, leading the charge. We are, and there's ways to do it that are, um, there's ways to do it. It doesn't have to be one way or one person's way or things like that. And, um, you know, I was writing out, I've had a few young people like in their 20s approach me in the last month and say, I want to work with you. I want to know what you know, because they, they're they looking for fresh information so they can disseminate on their own and decide where it fits, right? And uh, I was working with one fellow. And um, what I told him, I, I asked everybody the same question. Who do you trust more, you or me? And he's being polite. And he goes, well, I really like you, but I trust me more. And I'm like, that's the right answer. Good. You got it, right? And I said, I really want to reinforce this. But I told him, you're here to live your most beautiful life. You're here to be inspired by what truly and genuinely motivates you. What moves you? What moves your heart? So even though the darkness is around us, it doesn't mean we can't aspire to the higher good in ourselves and what we're here to do, right? Absolutely. And it's really important to remember that. And a lot of people are feeling they've got to find their purpose. And I'm like, what if, it, what if you're not meant to know it yet? What if you're going through the process of whatever you're going through and your purpose is going to emerge as you go through? And I've said the same thing. Things are starting to happen for me, but I'm not going to be where I am a month from now. I'm not going to be where I am a year from now. I'm not going to be here where I am two years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, because that's not how life works. Exactly. Exactly. You jump in, you jump in the middle of the stream and you go for it and know if you're in a strong current, stay a little closer to shore if you need to, so you can get out or hang onto a branch or. And I think that this is this, this last year and this time that's coming is actually preparing. If you didn't figure out, and, and I don't want people to feel bad, if you haven't figured out what your purpose is in the last year as we were through all these lockdowns and everything that's going on, maybe your purpose was to learn what was really going on. Because most people who are yeah. on here, let's be honest, they're already awake. Um, so it was about learning. Maybe 2020 was about learning. Maybe 2021 in the next coming months, because big things are happening. Like, like I said earlier, it's, you can feel it sizzling in the air. Something is big is about to explode. And I don't know what it is. And it's going to be scary. I'm going to be thank honest. Thank goodness it's going to be scary because that is going to be a bit of a wake up call for people. And not that I want people to be terrified, but they have to own their shit by being ignorant. Absolutely. And this is a time for those who are awake to realize that it's coming and not be afraid. Not be afraid. That's what I have gotten is like, no, you're safe. You don't don't be afraid, but something big is coming. And at the end of this, we will be um the light and the beacon for those coming through it. And that's really key. And maybe oh. in this turmoil that's coming, because it's gonna be tumultuous for sure, is that's might be when you find your new groove. Yes, totally, right. Yeah. Bring the light. So Terry's right with bring the light. And what's really Absolutely. interesting, I always compare myself and other people. I always say, you're the lighthouse. You're on the rocky shore, the the, the, the high cliff, but you're there as a beacon to, to yep. warn others. You don't change because the darkness comes. You don't get off the rock and run to inland. You stand there and you shine your light. But th why this is so important, but you still don't take any shit from any of the boats. Or you don't take any crap from anybody else either. It's really important to stand in your power and know. But we are bringing the light, but we're not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to use the word mandating. Not that I have the right to mandate anything. We don't have the right to tell anybody what to do. But when we know who we are, we know what the purpose of life and love is all about. We understand what it makes to be great humans, how to connect with nature, how the trees and the plants need our carbon dioxide so they can produce oxygen. John Kerry supposedly has his own plane flying around the world telling everybody that they have to uh, not fly because of... Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's hilarious. He's flying all over telling people not to fly. Right. It's, it's just so hypocritical. It's stupid. We are the light, but we're the lighthouse. We don't move. We have to stand solid in our ground. And it's funny, the friend I was clearing yesterday, one of the oils that came up was Idaho balsam fir. And I, I, that oil doesn't come up for a lot of people. And I, I can't remember what emotions we were clearing, but I'm looking through the book and I'm, I'm figuring out what emotions. And I knew that I, I pulled out the oil and then I went and got the book to justify the oil kind of thing, right? But it's the roots of the oil, any of the tree oils, whether it's sandalwood, cedarwood, pine, cypress, 
they're all deeply rooted uh, into the earth. They're connected, stay grounded. And um, she, hers were her ligament points, putting it on her, uh, the, the cuff of her hand, right? Mm -hmm. But it was just interesting and she's smelling it and she's like, this is amazing. And it's like, yeah. But we have to understand we are we are rooted in and many people are going through crap with families right now that the families are just being they're pulling out every dirty trick in the book. Some people are reliving past experiences as children because their games haven't changed. Some people didn't understand their family was like this and now they're seeing them for what they are. Yeah. I love you. But so that's how powerful love is. They're going to withhold love from people to make them talco uh, uh, co uh, what do you call the cow -cow. Cow -cow into what they want right yep. into what they want them to do that's not love that's control and anybody out here is doing it or you know anybody who's doing it if you know anybody's doing it get up send them this video just say what do you think of this yeah or and you know what i mean be honest i knowing that people in you know close to me because of my beliefs because i am awake and they think i'm absolutely nuts uh, and a conspiracy theorist um, talking behind my back. They're talking behind your back. So I, I was like, you know what? I don't need this. I don't need this. You're gone. I shut the door because I know what's happening. And I don't need this in my life. It's like, sorry, you're gone. Gossip is the weaponization of the tongue. It's easy to talk about people behind their back. Talk about them in front of their face and talk about, talk to them in front of a group of people and hear what they have to say. Oh, you want the unfair advantage of they don't. It's like tying their hands behind their back. They can't talk because they don't know what you're saying. Yeah. So I'm yesterday, I've been doing doing behind your back is no different that's than easy. anything else. That's, that's the coward's way out. That's, that's the, the coward's, coward's way out, right? The other way is triangulation. You know, two people are connected. So you go to one person and try to get them to say something about the other. You go to the other person, try to get them to say something about the one person. And then you're the hero because you're letting them both know that people are talking behind their back. Like some and of these games are so old and so they work, unfortunately. But that's what I did yesterday. I started writing out, uh, writing out I think I did about four pages about abuse patterns. And um, what did I call it? The various spaces of heartlessness, gossip, triangulation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring this back though to our topic because when, okay, so I've had that situation and it, it ended up becoming a little bit of a triangulation, but it didn't end up working it backfired in the long run, thankfully, because I'm not an idiot. Um, <laughs> and the other person wouldn't have allowed it. Well, Did the other person allow it? To some degree, but I put a kibosh to that. And okay. It was like, you decide where you sit because you don't sit on two chairs. Your ass doesn't sit on two chairs. All right. You're getting lights behind you. So you've got some angels and higher beings around you. I'm seeing orbs moving across behind you. It has been, I mean, I honestly, <laughs> this has been like, these last couple of weeks have been like incredible. I have been getting so many downloads, feeling cool. things and just trusting. It's all about trusting yourself so, and trusting yeah. the things get that are coming from the divine and yeah, yeah it's it's been like in, I, I feel it like oh it's the world is crumbling but i feel like i'm rising <laughs> and i want everybody to rise with me and we are we don't have to fall with it we're not part of the structure that's decaying and falling away but if we don't create a better structure we're going to repeat it I think, yes. I can't remember where I heard this, but it resonated about, there's a 40% chance if we don't wake up, we're going to recreate the same nonsense that we've had. And we're not recreating it. There's enough of no. us who are awake right now. And the kicker is, is these people don't, I mean, to be honest, um, these people don't repent, like in my scripture. And this is where I want to bring it back to the forgiveness. They don't, they think they're in the right. And therefore, I do not have to forgive them. I don't have to be in their presence because it's toxic. And it this is, is where toxic. Get to these people think that they're um, they're narcissists. They think they're above it all. They th they they do, and that they that they're right. That they are right. Enough is enough. And I'm just like, you know what? F you, Jack. I'm done. And uh, I have you an know, apology. And I even if I did, here's the deal. If I got an apology, fine. I'll forgive you. But I'm not letting you back in my life because I already know what. The pattern, right. this is a pattern behavior. This is a pattern of people, right? Abuse patterns, forgive and forget. Exactly. I'm not God and I don't have Alzheimer's. <laughs> exactly. And they, and I'm going to be, they, the bad guys, um, 
they want you to forgive and forget. That's that whole uh, new age thing. I'm going to bring it back to that again, yes. too. Because if you forgive everybody, you know, all oh, life is good. You're the love and the light if you forgive, but you're not the one being hurt. You're forgiving yeah. the transgressions from somebody onto another person calling for universal forgiveness. And it's like, no, no, and I do have an essential oil forgiveness and there is a time for it. Often when I apply it to people, it's they're forgiving themselves. I was just going to say that it's they maybe betray themselves. Right. Yes. And we do it all the time. Right. We yeah. do betray ourselves all the time. And we have to realize that and allowing people that are bad for us in our lives is actually a betrayal too. It's a self betrayal. Yes. Right. And, and self betrayal is such a big one because you're meant to love the people that you're in your birth family. So I was going to write a, a t-shirt up at the front of a t-shirt. I survived my birth family. And I thought, okay, too many people will resonate and they'll want to buy it off my back. Right. But, uh, and not everybody's had that experience. So I'm not saying that they have, and I'm not making excuses. Right. But, um, we have to realize that just because you're born into a family doesn't mean they're nice. No. Just because you have blood relatives doesn't mean they're nice. Just because you belong to a fraternity or an organization doesn't mean they're nice. I'm not, I'm not leaving it just with the, the family. It, it's any organization. When you start to esteem yourself outside of yourself or assume you belong to something or willing to sell your soul so you can be one belong. of belong, right? Isn't that what we all belong. want? Belong. <laughs> belong. And, I have a great thing. A friend of mine sent me many years ago. I actually wrote it down, put on a post-it note on my husband's uh, monitor because <laughs> he's had issues with his family too. And it's, um, it was friends are God's apology for family or something along those lines. <laughs> Cause you get to choose your family. You get to choose you your friends. Choose, you, can, you can choose your friends. You can't choose your family, but your friends can become your family. And that's what is happening right now because people are like, you're my godsend. I can't, I wait to, to see you every week. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just yeah. like, it's okay if I help you ground and I help you reinforce that you know what you're doing. And I don't tell anybody what to think. I, that's not my place. I share what I know as we are doing right now, share different um, possibilities surrounding certain topics that are prevalent in our society, like forgiveness. And you share different insights and let people make their own decision. Love them enough to let them fly. Yeah. And I actually want to bring, go, go back to that forgiveness thing. And I think the most important person we have to forgive is ourselves, which we touched on. But when other people hurt us, forgiveness isn't what sets you free. No, it's actually releasing the pain that sets you free. It's not about forgetting or letting these people or forgiving them. It's about letting go of the pain that they created in you because it creates blockages, right? Oh, and totally. So I'm going to let that go and they no longer have power over me. Yeah. And well, that's the big thing there. It's not, it's not the forgiveness. It's the letting go of the pain that they, they gave you. And it hurts. And it hurts. And when it we let go of that. It hurts so much when your heart is breaking because you might love even the people that the abuser loves. You know, yeah. so you might have a sister who has three children who are expecting children. And, you know, you, you start to learn all the games and the manipulations of how she puts you down to make herself look good in front of her children. But the children say, remember when you did that? And I think, how do you know? You weren't even born yet. And you realize the mother is seating her children against you. And the next generation's coming. And you realize nobody around the mother has the balls. I'm going to call it that. The fucking balls, the guts, the integrity to stand up. So you have to let the whole family go. So you divorce yeah. yourself from 30 people and it hurts. You go and spend time in nature. You feed the birds. You do whatever you need to do and you stay with it and you feel the pain. And then that's what heals you is feeling it and moving through. Right. Absolutely. And then and then that gives you the space to find your tribe. Because your family is not your tribe necessarily. Not anymore. Yes. Yeah, not necessarily. Correct. And it can be. It can be, and this is beautiful. I'm going to tie this back because, you know, I've been doing a lot of research and reading and stuff in the Gnostic texts and the Bible and trying to get, you know, more spiritual information from different and looking at it in a different way. And one of the things at the beginning of John, uh, one of the things that the Pharisee said before God came to him and, and just divulged all this stuff was he said that Jesus came to him and lied and took him away from his family 
traditions. And this is what we're breaking. We must break these traditions because that's what's holding us in bondage to all this crap and pain. And we don't realize it. Yep. We don't realize it. Like, think about, um, all right, I'm going to go with Thanksgiving because it's not a religious holiday, but all of us come together with our family. How many people hate going? But it's a tradition. We do this all the time. And even though you leave angry, there's always a fight. There's always something that goes on when the whole family goes. Why can't we break that tradition and create a new one where we end up happy? Yes. We're supposed to be. Thanksgiving is a great one because we're going there to be thankful and we leave angry. Do you know what I mean? And so when he, the Pharisee says, you, he took you away from your traditions. Well, why is that? Maybe a bad is that thing? a bad thing? <laughs> we have created, and, and I believe that um, the Kazarians, and I've never, I haven't done that show yet either. I have so many. I've got a long list of things I've been researching. Uh, but the Kazarian mafia, they took over so many, every religion on the planet, every institution. And they created these traditions. They indoctrinated us to do these things and and they defy who we are. So if you're going somewhere because you um, feel like you have to, because it's the tradition, we all spend Christmas together. We all spend Easter together. We all spend Thanksgiving. That's the beauty of these lockdowns. We were able to break tradition. And this is where there, there's some good that came out of this is yes. if we can look at it that way and not feel guilty about breaking that tradition. The, the people who love you will call you on the holidays if they can't be with you. They will make yeah. sure that you know your matter or what have you, right? Absolutely. But it's yeah. letting go of the old. And I think that's this last year has been a wonderful way of letting go of some of the old and seeing it for what it is. Yes. And letting it go. And we I can agree. start to forge something new. And then the forgiveness, it's its forgiving yourself again for allowing this for so many. Because now we can see, you know, I had a great Easter. I didn't see anybody in my family. Um, I was in my we, garden. We saw each other. We did. <laughs> we did. Um, and that's, it was good. I didn't miss a thing. And forgiving myself for forcing myself to go into situations that maybe I didn't want to be in, but you had to because it was expected of you. Yes. Expected. Expected. We expect you to take our nonsense. We expect you to be the brunt of our jokes. We expect you to not grow beyond what your parents can do. We expect you to toe the line. Yep. Right. And it's, uh, and we, some of us grew up with that energy. Not everybody did, but some of us did grow up in that energy that you can't outshine your family. Yep. And then when push comes to shove, they're never going to have your back, whether you learn that when you're 12 or you learn that when you're 22 or 32 or 42 or 52 or 62, 72 doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter. But sooner or later, you're going to learn it that that's just what it is. Absolutely. And the more you speak up and the more th aligned you are with truth, probably the more, not outrageous, but the more um, controlling they will be to get you back in line, right? Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's just what I find. People are telling me this. A lot of the clients I'm talking to right now are going through the same nonsense. Parents are acting out, you know, or, or being cruel. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, siblings so, yeah. are being cruel. Siblings are being cruel too. Cousins, you, you name it, the whole gamut, whoever is in your life, somebody's being cruel and just, um, and it's about taking control, taking control back. Cause this has been an out of control year right? Yes. We've all lost control. And you can see the people who are trying to grasp for more control in their different areas. And they always were. But if they weren't controlling, what would they be doing differently? If you weren't controlling somebody, what would you aspire to in your own life? What would your goals and your dreams be? If you didn't have to control somebody else, what is the most magnificent aspect of your personality that would shine? And they don't know how to do that. So that's why they control, right? I don't know what a Heoki is. I really, I don't understand that. Term. Yeah, what is... Uh Heyoka. 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 Uh, Terry, life of Heyoka. So you... this isn't about putting people down. This is about taking ownership for the insanity that goes on around all of us right now. Yeah. We're seeing it, whether it's people in the stores, you know, trying to show you how tough they are and how smart they are because they tell you to wear a mask. Empath. He said empath. 
Yes. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Very nice, right? And the empaths, the, the um, okay, so again, clearing a friend last night, what it turned out that most of her issues weren't even hers. 52% of the confusion, I'm going to call it emotional confusion for lack of a better word, was hers. Okay. So that means 48% was other people. And then as soon as I said it was other people, she went boom, 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 and named all the people. Okay, let's go through and clear each of the, what are these people doing? Okay, whether it's your parents, children, cousins, sisters, your boss, people, doesn't matter, right? It's doesn't just, matter. and then things like hate and resentment are coming up and she's going hate and I'm going hate your hate, like just bring it on, really feel this and let's, let's clear this out, right? And when she was done, she's like, wow, I feel so different. Yeah. Because it wasn't her stuff. It's everybody else projecting their stuff. And the empaths have to really be careful with um, absorbing other people's stuff. Because I'm a firm believer the meek shall inherit the earth. Yep. But the meek aren't going to be the cowards or anything like that. The meek are going to be the ones who are trodden upon, who didn't want to hurt anybody. So they didn't stand up for themselves. But now they're standing up. They're not causing anybody grief. They're just standing up. And if someone else perceives that as grief, that's their business, right? Like yeah. that's that's going to change that the um, those who uh, are truly loving and caring are going to stand up, even if they tell you to go F yourself. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm going to go back to the book of John and, you know, uh, close to the end of it, he talks about the, you know, who, you know, when we, because there is a separation where we're, we are dividing, there is a calling. Sorry, oh, totally. God, we are not all one. We are not... Uh, but those of us in our, you know, that feel this way, we're the ones who have to come together. And yes, um, we are a tribe. We we are a tribe. We we need to come together. It we don't want that to be divided. That's no. where but I want to be divided from these people, these other from people. People, the apathetic people who don't care about anyone but themselves, right? And, and I, it's really yeah. good that you're saying this because what's happening, I'm I'm finding, and I've been saying this for a while, a lot of the with all the changes that are coming, people are coming in and nitpicking at those that are trying to stand out. Yes. When I say stand out, I don't mean stand up, but they're trying to say, hey, wait a minute, we need to do something different. And they're coming in and they're they're criticizing, they're critiquing, they're putting them down. And I know Jordan Sather, I don't like to drop names, but he went after a group of so-called truthers. I'm gonna call them so-called truthers. They may be speaking the truth, they may not. They may be intentionally given misinformation to keep the masses thrown off because we know the asshats are watching them. Yes, they're watching it's all of us. To, watching all of us, it's up to us to discern what is true and what is not. So people can say whatever they want. I can say what I want. It doesn't make me right, wrong, indifferent or anything else. If it resonates, take what works. And if it doesn't leave it. Yes. It's really important Absolutely. that we stop chewing on each other's backs. Absolutely. And yes. And I, and I had a thought and it. You ended where it wasn't a good segue in, but when I, I talking about the calling again, um, I want to go back to that is I did a, I did a, I guess a month or two ago, I did this. Are you, I did a video on, are you ready? Because what, what we're coming into is um, what we need to be ready for is we need to be spiritually ready. Um, figure out who you are, which are, where, where you belong. And that's, that's a spiritual thing. This is not all about the news and what's happening. And it, I want people to go out of that um, somewhat. I mean, we all need to know what's going on you around us. You can go us. in and out. You can move into it, learn, but, and then pop but learn out. to go in, 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 yeah. in, and figure out who you are, your connection to source, your connection to the creator. Um, work on that because as we move forward, um, even people who are awake and aware but are stuck in that matrix, you can be awake and aware and still stuck in the matrix and a total totally. truth or and stuck in the matrix if you have not crossed over to that spiritual side and figuring out who you are. I'm not saying go to church. I'm not saying go find a religion and whatever. I'm not into religion. It's finding out where you come from. And that's what the book of John talks about. It's like you, when you leave this plane, you go to where you came from. That's, and it's, we've been, um, cut off from that for a long time. What we're doing in this planet is actually reopening that, right? We're off the hamster wheel of recycling and uh, regurgitating this, this life in this world time after time. And it even says that in the book of John that yes, if you don't figure out your lessons and figure out who you are and where you come from, you come back down. It's in there. It actually talks about reincarnation. Um, 
And that's why I'm not, I'm not sure if I agree with all of that, that you've got to learn lessons. I'm not sure if I agree with all of that. I think, and it doesn't make me right or wrong. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying, I mean, but I don't believe it's a punishment. Oh, you got to go back and do it again. That's just um, a theory that we have. You don't get a high enough score in school, like a, a grade. You got to go back and do the course again. I, I, I'm not, that does not land with me, but I don't have any reason to say that, or I've not yeah. come across any of my own information to say that, but I don't think we're punished. We come back because I was told I didn't need to be here and I chose to come here. There is that too. I think there is that too. Um, it's funny because my husband and I have talked about many, for a few years now, before even all of this, that why are there so many people on the planet? Are we stacking the deck for something? Interesting. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it? So did we stack the deck for what's coming right now? Interesting. I know. I, and I, I don't have the answers. I just, I, it's like everything. You decide what lands with you, what resonates, because yeah. something lands with me, doesn't land with me today, doesn't mean it won't in a week, a month, or a year. I'm open to understanding it in a different context. Yes, and I'd have to go back and read it again to get a better context. Oh, isn't that amazing when you go back and look at what you read something two or three years ago, and now because you have a different knowing, you go back and you read it, and you get a whole different, different interpretation out of it. Yeah, it it, it blossoms. Every time I yes. read that book, it blossoms into something more, and it's like mind-blowing. And, you know, to the point where it's like, okay, i got to go read something else that I've read before. I want that to blossom too, but I keep going back to this one because it's full of information on like, and I don't believe it's like literal. I believe it's figurative. Um, it, it might give you just kind of the feel. I, I, I kind of look at the feeling of it, of, okay. of yeah. the words, not the, this actually happened exactly this way. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I, I, I get that too. Yeah. And you look at, I mean, a lot of people, like you got to look at the Bible that way or any of these spiritual teachings. You got to feel the essence of it and what feels true. And it may not be exactly how it's written that it happened, but the essence of it. it is open, yes. And it opens you up to a different possibility or a different explanation, right? Absolutely. I can't wait to get the new information and the true information about what really goes on on the planet, what our history is, where we're going, what our possibilities are. And we all know, I was just watching a, um, a video last night. Was it called Absolute Slavery? So hi, Karen. So absolute slavery, okay. and it was talking about all the um, what's coming and what the dark team is doing and how they're going to shut down oxygen and they're planning on shutting down um, vehicle travel. It's all going to be rail travel and how Warren Buffett owns the rail, railways and, and whatever, right? So you can see that there's still a push for the darkness to come, but we are going to outshine that. It's noise now. I feel yes. like that's all noise. They're, they're making noise to wake people up, and it's like, well, you know, but for me, I just like, whatever. I look at that and go, whatever. That's noise to me. It's not what's going to happen. And I don't look at it. Lost. I don't look at it that way. I believe there's going to be possible. They're going to keep trying. And what people don't understand about psychopaths, they want to kill you more than you don't want to be killed. They have more skin in the game because they get off on it and, and, and more skin in the game in that sense. They get off on it. That's what their thrill is. But it doesn't mean we're not going to outshine them. Right? We're going to outshine yeah. the darkness. I don't doubt that for a minute, but we are waking up to it. But we have to see what's going on so we don't recreate it. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. And do you believe, Terry's asking, do you believe we all agreed to be here during this specific time to help push the shift? I think so. Maybe uh, not I all of so us, too. but I think a lot of us in yes. one way. Oh, my God. I've got this big hump right there from the and we're here. And we're here to do different things. So it doesn't mean, um, it doesn't mean we all have to stand up and be on a soapbox or whatever. Maybe we're here to do something in writing. Maybe we're here to create art. Maybe we're here to awaken our consciousness. Maybe we're here to understand the physicality of the planet and how humans and the animal and plant kingdom are to unite so that when the shift does come, we got to come out the other side. We, like, what's the, what's the point of shifting if there's nothing planned for the better? So we are going to come out. Maybe we're going to create better, cleaner waterways. Maybe we're going to use our conscious energy and clean up the skies. Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe we're going to ask for the um, the new energies, the um, the hidden technologies to be brought forth, so we can understand it. Maybe we're going to create new learning institutions that get away from all the psycho bullshit that goes on at the universities, the indoctrination camps. We've got so much good ahead of us if that's what we choose to do. But we're here for a reason, and when we trust ourselves, yeah. But soul travels, the same thing, right? When we trust ourselves. 
we can be aligned to be there for when the shift does come that we can see where we're naturally meant to fall into. It's interesting, yeah. Terry's talking about soul travelers. And I, I um, a few years ago, I was on that channel. I, I, this was unplanned. I was supposed to be the speaker at the night episode for Toronto Encounters. Anyways, and they had me do a clearing for a, sp a secret space, um, a secret space soldier. And we went looking for a soul and we couldn't find it. And he said it was in a jar. And I go, break the jar. And he goes, I can't. And I didn't know enough about it to be able to show him how to. And I don't even know if I could do it now, but to break the jar. But now I'm hearing so much that is happening that they are stealing the souls of humanity. And they're keeping them in hidden. And I know another woman that I cleared, her soul was down in a cellar in a basement because her mother had um, condemned her to fire and brimstone. Oh. You're going to hell. She couldn't go in and get her soul. She didn't have the courage to get her soul and bring it back. You're in the breaking body. up a little bit, Sandy. So it's really important that we understand that, right? Is it better? Better? Sandy, you're you're breaking up now. Yeah, so I got that her mother condemned her to fire and brimstone. Okay. So oh, what I'm saying is her soul again. was in a Okay, I'm going to I'm going to make this bigger again. It seems to work. So all I'm saying is that um, the souls leave the body. Understand how powerful your soul is. Your soul is who you are. It's the essence of you. It's the character. It's the personality. And it's what you aspire to, what you love. Right? So understand how important our souls are. It's really important. And that's why they're taking absolutely. the soul. So we, we, we know they want the blood. We know they want the adrenaline, the hormones. They want all that stuff. You know, a man told me one time that um, somebody had given him some bear gall. And I said, what's that? And he goes, like, gallbladder from the bear. And I said, what is that? And he goes, well, that's why they're killing all the bears. They're grabbing the gallbladders. Where do you think it's the aphrodisiacs they're grabbing, the, the Asian people are grabbing, right? But they're using that the same way as they use adrenochrome. People have told me that they've got, like, um, camps in China where they have grow bears. They grow bears so that they can kill them and harvest their gall, gall, gall whatever the hormones bladders. in the gallbladder it's it's well, really it's really it's, it's a bile it's filter bile. The gallbladder is a bile filter so the bile that comes out of your liver or goes into your liver i can't remember now but all um, i'm saying is they're harvesting I'm like, the energy they're harvesting okay. the energy from the bears but if the bears are eating the grass or eating the whatever nature maybe they don't have all the toxins in it i don't know i'm not saying it's right or wrong i hadn't heard about it all i know is i've had it confirmed by other people that this is what's happening right Am I breaking up still? You're okay. You're cutting in and out a little bit, but it's getting better. Okay. So I guess many just, souls, just, uh, just reading Karen here. Yes, many souls are okay. taken for harvest off the planet. If into black box, it may be the end. Soul to soul transfers, even body snatching. Wow, that's not scary at all. <laughs> and that's why. I actually, you know, the last little bit, uh, I think the last couple of times that Sandy and I spoke, we talked about protection, clearing and protection. And that's key. Grounding, clearing your energy and protecting yourself. And continuously, every day, make sure you have protection around you so that you actually cannot be harvested. Yes. And, and they're, they're, um, Karen's right about a lot of that. And Karen, I've talked about this too, right? Being able to mm -hmm. transfer the souls and take the souls out. People have told me that they figure a number of people coming down the birth canal, that they switch the souls out and put you into a different family. So there's so much more that can be done that we're not aware of. Right. And it doesn't matter if you're born, if you feel you're the black sheep and you're born in the wrong family, if you're not being treated with respect, distance yourself yep. until that changes. And if it doesn't change, then, oh, well. You know, love yourself first, always. Yes. Right? Because if you don't love yourself, nobody else is going to respect you either. And even Absolutely. if you love yourself, doesn't mean they're going to respect you. And often what people don't realize with, um, like, if you're born into a family and you think you don't belong, the only place you're an asshole is in that family. You go out and function <laughs> everywhere else in your life and you're, you're appreciated, you're valued, you're respected. Oh, but I got to be the asshole so you guys can all esteem yourself. Yeah. Sometimes when things happen, it's great. Then you can write about it too, right? And put it in your book. So I was sharing with my friend yesterday about what I was writing about sibling rivalry and picking favorites and black sheep. And she's reading it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's, if you can make the writing generic, but everybody can relate to it because yep. it applies to so many people, it shows you the, the functionality of the psyche of the people that you're surrounded by, right? 
<laughs> oh, the gallbladder is responsible for the passion of life, inspiration, action, assertiveness. Okay, thanks. The yang organ and the liver is the yin. Uh, organ partner governing decision and making plan and decision making and planning. Thanks, Karen. Where, yeah, thanks, Karen. This is where it's so important that we learn about all the different um, aspects of our body that we don't know. So when you look at all the glands, all the organs, they all play a role inside our bodies. It's just Western society, Western medicine, Western biology that has discredited or discounted it. Like you look at the spleen, the spleen also spiritualizes the blood. We're told we don't need the spleen. So now we're told the vaccines, we need the vaccines, but the vaccines can separate the soul from the body. So we start to understand when we put ourselves together, we pull ourselves apart and look at all the different aspects of ourselves energetically, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, sexually, and then put ourselves back together. And we realize we are the true technology. We are the, the intelligent ones. We have a consciousness that you cannot, you can try to replicate, but you can't replicate us a hundred percent. No. And um, I actually want to go back to that because most of us don't even realize like, you know, the work that you and I do with the body code and the emotion code and all that stuff. There is actually a pattern to what emotions sit in what organ. And that's because but we don't understand that. Um, and and we, we need to come back. To why does this, why, is, why are things sitting in my lungs? Why do I always have lung issues or why do yes. I have heart issues? There is an reason that. Yes. I'm just going to put the um, put the uh, chart up that you follow, and it's interesting. These are not the only emotions that are associated with different organs and different meridians. Um, you can find more, and I find different practitioners come up with a different set of emotions. Mm -hmm. So always trust yourself, and you know this, Betty, right? When you're working yep. with somebody, like I found, indignation is in the liver and gallbladder. You're indignant. Well, maybe you should be because somebody just royally put the screws That's to you and, you and you should be indignant because it hurt, but it doesn't mean you stay in that energy, right? No, but I, I actually honestly sometimes think those, like when something happens and it spurs you into that emotion, that actually can be an action. Um, it, it becomes two things, either victim or action. So what am I going to, am I going to just internalize this and be a victim? Or am I going to go out and say, hell no, and raise some fire. And then I can let it go. Because it really depends it, on your and situation. It's like, doo, 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 doo. But it yes. depends on your situation. Because if you are surrounded by an abuser and all the weak, morally weak people that the abuser supports, and they are in your circle, you're screwed no matter what, because you can't get away. No matter who you reach out to, they're going to gossip to somebody else. So you really have yeah. to understand it's not a matter of standing up sometimes it's a matter of looking at the psychopathy of the people that you're surrounded with whether they're psychopaths sociopaths narcissists shame based you know so there's a lot more to that but trust yourself if you're in a situation where no matter what you do you end up being the screw up or things don't work out start looking at all your periphery the people around you see who knows who and decide who's gossiping and who's keeping the matrix of um control I use the word control over you, right? So Karen's um, Karen's talking about the book, Releasing Emotional Patterns. I was using this oh, for last night. Thanks. And it's interesting because I went and pulled up balsam fir. I can't remember what emotion we were releasing, and it doesn't matter now. But um, I went and pulled up balsam fir, and I you're said, I could go ahead and Sandy, Sandy, you're, you're internet, you're garbly. So is that better? I, we miss, yeah, now it is. Because so what, after you put the book down, whatever you said after that was really garbly about the emotions. Okay. So uh, yesterday I picked up the um, balsam fir was the person I was working with. I picked up balsam fir and then I thought I'm going to go get the book and look up balsam fir. And I did to see what emotion. And when I said, I, I, don't, I can't remember if it was agitation or what she was feeling, but it was like, mm -hmm. oh yeah. So you start to really trust your intuition when you know what to do, but you want to just confirm your work. Right. So it was just an interesting, it was an interesting process. And, and when somebody's releasing that much pain, that much hate, that much resentment, that much anger, because people shit on her because she's a nice person. Mm -hmm. So now she's got to get aggressive so that she can function within that framework of the different relationships she has. Some of these aren't going to change. Right. And it doesn't matter why that's up to her, but it's just interesting that it's just interesting to watch it come up and watch her release it and realize you don't have to take anybody's shit. No, you don't. Because nobody, and, people don't tell us that anymore. No, because again, it's tradition. 
It's tradition. <laughs> You know, um, because, you know, you're supposed there's is the social contract we have to some extent. Right. The social contract is like, you know, you, you have to stick with your family and you have to do this. She was the dutiful daughter. All, all these <laughs> have twos. And it's when you actually let go of these. I don't have to do anything. Thank you yes. very much. I have to do what's right for me. And that takes a long time. That's, you yeah, know, and even yeah. when you start to say, OK, this is where I'm going to draw the line here. This is where I'm, it doesn't all happen at once. And people need to realize that this is not, you know, all of a sudden you flick a switch and say, I'm done with it all. I don't have to do anything except for what feels good to me. That can be, you know, very narcissistic, too. But it's, totally. it's, about a, it's a balance of I'm not, you know, where do you start drawing the line? And then once you've done it there successfully, you can draw it in another place and have confidence. And it's about building that confidence that I can actually start to build that healthy space around me with the right people and the right things. And maybe walk away from some of these traditions, walk away from some of these institutions and say, yeah, that's no longer serving me. I understand that I'm walking away. Even though people will say, what? You can't walk away from that. Hell yeah, I can. Watch me. And sometimes I agree with you. That is the right idea for anybody who's watching this. This is the right idea, how you separate yourself from dysfunction, but it's depending on, but de yes, but depending on the degree of dysfunction you're in and the number of people around you, people are going to try to pull you back in. So whenever, you, and I will say that when I work with people, okay, you've had a major breakthrough and you know, you're being controlled at home or whatever. When you go into that environment next, they're going to feel your energy shift and they're going to try to get you back. So yes. then you, you help them get through the next level, because usually if you just stand up to them, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, ten 10 times, whatever the number is, then they will slowly realize you're not going back into that pattern. Yes. And there is also energetically because of the first time you do it, you're tentative. But by the time you've done it a few times and you're actually really standing firm, firm they yes. energetically feel that you aren't budging. And totally. That's it. And that's, that's what you want to get people to that point, that they are firm and they trust themselves more than anybody. And they're not taking this anymore. Yes. And that's why I say you have to do it bit by bit. But when you you that's when you gain the confidence and start to really trust yourself and Yes. And then and then it's amazing when you do that, how many doors open and okay. possibilities open. So those people who at the beginning we were talking and asked, you know, you're finding your soul's purpose and stuff. That's how you find it. It's actually starting to close those other doors. So the doors that aren't working for you so that the windows can open and let the light in. You know, and, and then exactly, exactly, exactly that we're all meant to lead dynamic lives. And I was starting to read this earlier and I'm going to finish up with, uh, this now. You're here to live your own life, to be true to what genuinely inspires and moves you. Uh, remain true to what inspires your heart and commit to your spiritual path because everything happens in this connection of the unseen before it lands in the physical. As you do so, you will become increasingly peaceful and powerful. Trust yourself and trust your heart to lead the way as you grow into your true and divine self. We are here to awaken consciousness into love energy. And know however you ex choose to express that, that's what you're here to do. That's fantastic. Yeah. Do it. But this is what you're not here to take other people's crap. You're not here to follow and punch a punch card or whatever, <laughs> whatever that concept is that you're on somebody else's time. We're not here to do that. You're here yeah. to be inspired. You're here to share yourself. And right now, that's where we're at. We're at that breaking away from this slave trade because um, that's they've they've enslaved us, and we didn't even realize it. Yes. The kicker is, my husband has actually said this is the largest slave trade ever um, we've ever had because all of humanity is enslaved. He's been saying that for years. Yes, and he's he's. I was like, you're right. We are because you're a slave to all these things that they told us we needed to have to be yes. happy. And are any of us truly happy in that? No. You know, I've had all that and it was empty as can be because I didn't have my passion. I didn't have my purpose. And I had the house and the cottage and the business and I had the designer dog. I had it all. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what this is about. Mm -hmm. Right. So absolutely, Christine. Absolutely. I was wondering um, if we don't have to maybe Karen would Karen like to hop on for a couple of minutes because I know she's giving great comments here and always. And I haven't talked to you, Karen, in a long time. Do you mind, Sandy? No, not at all. 
All right, let's. Uh, so I like how Karen's talking about the fear of repeating the uh, past life because that is what we're clearing a lot of the past lives. And I had to go through some things to realize who actually is hurting me in this lifetime. And when some certain betrayals came to light, and I hope I'm saying it in a non emotional way, only because once you clear it, you clear it. It's just a memory that you're telling a story about. But once I realized betrayals that were happening in this lifetime, I could feel this black cloud that I've, I've experienced in past life recalls. I could feel right. it lift. So that was kind of interesting to watch that happen, right? And um, past lives, my, my friend last night, she kept doing this. And it's like somebody was holding her by the scruff of the neck. And that was past lives. Like, you're not going to stand up for yourself. Don't you dare. And her neck, she just kept touching her neck. Sometimes people feel that they've had a rope around their neck or they've drowned. Other people feel that um, they know they've been stabbed in the back. Whatever it is, right? But hers was somebody had grabbed her by the scruff of the neck. So we had to pull that cord off. Yeah. It's amazing what... I mean, what people do to each other energ energetically, and it you don't even realize what's holding you back. Um, it's not yours. Because even though in your head you want to let them go, you can't because you're either corded to them or they put a hook in you or they've, you know, totally. stabbed you with something or all these things that they can do energetically. And most people do it unwittingly, just so you, everybody knows it's not like somebody's going there with a little voodoo doll, but it's no. their thoughts. It's their thoughts, yeah. and people are thoughtless because they're not. Um, are they are they angry family. or they're jealous or envious or whatever any of those things are, right? Karen, if you're happens, still there, you're if you're still there, I just emailed you the link if you want to hop on for a few minutes. So if um and if you're feeling any kind of envy, you can send people to things. And I had to watch this week. I was getting ticked off about a few things, and I'd stop and I would feel my feelings. And I realized as I was putting bird in the bird feeders, I was throwing the food in. Well, why would the birds want to feed off of my anger? <laughs> so yeah no visiting cannot connect to skype now right but um so that's okay karen maybe we'll do it another time so it's interesting so then i had to stop and say no i'm lovingly feeding the birds i don't want them eating off of my anger because uh, all of a sudden things came to light and i thought how could i have been so stupid not to see all this but you can't because it's a little bit here and it's a little bit there and then it's a little bit there. And then you realize there's certain personalities that are all connecting and they're all doing the same thing. But you can't you think it can't be possible. You can't fathom they would be that mean spirited. But guess well, what? <laughs> Sometimes people are. So and it doesn't matter how you figure it out. If it's just one or two people, it's a group. You figure it out and you decide to make you decide you love yourself enough that you, you make the separation. Absolutely. And it hurts. And it does hurt. And it's like I've said, it's not all at once. We do it bit by bit by bit because we gain totally. strength. Every time you do a little piece and uh, you, you grow, you gain strength and you do. it gets That's easier, and easier. And then the big blocks, you can actually almost wipe out once you've really got the hang of it, you can wipe them out faster. I love how you say that because you know what, when I work with clients, I always go for the small things first. I clean yeah. out the little bit of stuff because it might not even be yours. And then I start peeling back the onion and usually at the last sessions that we do, then I go after the big stuff because now you know what love feels like. You know it. You have the right to love yourself. You know, you have the love, the right to respect yourself. You have the right to demand others respect you. If they don't, off they go. And then you deal with the heavy stuff last and you slowly start to elevate your frequency, if, if that's the right word for it, because yeah. then you get rid of your baggage and half it's not yours. Half it was put there by other people. Yes. And that gives you but those little things give you that strength to get there because yes. you wouldn't have been able to tackle the big things right at the at the get go. So it's just like uh, if you're training, if you're weight training or doing something, you don't start with 200 pounds right from the get go. <laughs> you start with the little ones, the five pounds. And, and you, you work up, your way up. up you wake your way up. Right and we now. have to do that with everything. Especially emotions the because they hurt. Yes. So let's get rid of those little ones and create the small boundaries. And then the bigger boundaries can come when you see, oh, that works. Oh, yes. Karen's here. Uh, hey, Karen. How you doing? <laughs> so good to see you. I miss you. Thank you. Nice to see you guys, too. So what are you thinking of all this? How am I doing? I'm excited to see you guys and having fun. <laughs> on a, a PJ, on a sleepover party tonight. <laughs> oh, nice. 
Yeah. You know, you're making some great comments here because we're all on the same page and we, we talk here and I talk a fair bit, but we're yeah. all on the same page of standing up for yourself and understanding how abuse patterns. Other people hurt you. They do not have the right to hurt you. They do not repent. You do not forgive them. You don't owe them forgiveness. They have to start owning their shit and taking responsibility for hurting other exactly. people. And when people exactly. don't know how to be decent human beings, what's decent? Who am I? So as soon as I jump on a religious pulpit or a political pulpit or whatever, academic pulpit, now I'm trying to come off that I, I sound like an expert. There's no expert in being human. We're all qualified. We're more than qualified. Mm -hmm. But we all have a sense of what it means to be decent. But it's usually the decent ones that get screwed over. Because mm -hmm. you know why you don't go up and screw over a psychopath? Because they're psychopaths. They'll kill you. So That's you go right. and you take somebody who's nice who won't hurt you. So you pick on the empaths. You pick on somebody who won't clean your clock. And this is what we have to understand about the tweeners. All the tweeners out there that maybe want to get a little bit further ahead financially. So they'll fuck you a little bit just to get ahead. Maybe get a position at work or get you not promoted so they can get promoted. Mm -hmm. But they're still hurting you. There's no honor in humanity in the current... Um, capitalized society that I see. And I'm not saying it's not anywhere. It's just not everywhere. Uh, yes. But it's, you know what? And I think that's one of the big things that are going to change as, because there is a big totally. shift happening. And, totally. you know, like I said, not everybody, nobody's, we're not all the same, but when you find your tribe, that's the unity we need and not to infight in your tribe. Yes. But, right. Cause I mean, I mean, how many people talk about, you know, you're part of my tribe and Sandy, thank you, Karen, because thanks to Karen, I met Sandy and she's like, yes. our first conversation, you need to speak to Sandy. Okay. I sent her an email and here we are on a weekly basis now doing this and we are. Mm -hmm. like, and like, Karen oh. is fantastic for connecting people, no strings attached. And if you get a chance, you do something for Karen, no strings attached. This is the way it's supposed to be. Karen is the definition of the divine mother energy of how we're coming into collaboration moving forward. Yeah. No strings attached. If it works, it works. If you can help somebody, help them. And one of my one of my clients yesterday was telling me about some people down in Costa Rica. This guy walked into their car and he was yeah. upset. And it turns out his business partner screwed him over, left the country, took all the money. He has a girlfriend who's expecting and he's beside himself. He has no money to support them. And as he starts telling them, they yeah. hugged him. He started crying. They emptied their wallets and she doesn't know how much they gave him, but it was at least $700 US dollars just to get him through until he could figure out what he was doing. This is the future. Helping people out for no reason, just because you're, you're put into a situation where something comes up, help them. Yep. It doesn't mean you don't get paid for the work you do because you have to make a living yourself, but this is the new way you help because you can. So what if it's your time? If it's your money, if it's your say, energy, if there's you get somebody, there's a really good scripture for that. Is there? <laughs> there is actually. Uh, it's a, I don't actually know if it's, yeah, I think it is in the Bible, but I read it in a Gnostic book, uh, quotes from Jesus. But basically the oh, disciples asked, you know, how should we pray or should we fast? Should we uh, give to charity? And he basically said it's no to all of those. And charity is actually, you don't give to somebody else to help. You help what's right in front of you. It's exactly yes. what those people did. When the opportunity comes for you to help somebody in need at your doorstep, that's where you go. You don't give it to the Clinton Foundation or to uh, Red Cross or wherever because you don't know where that. That's not helping anyone. So I had to forgive myself. We talked about forgiveness. I gave to a certain charity. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to be on the radar. But I gave to that charity, and then you find out in hindsight. They were human trafficking. Same as I'm going to call um, Red Cross. When the federal oh government God. says, I will give you for every dollar you give, I'll give two dollars. So if you give a hundred, they'll give two hundred. They're money laundering. And you start realizing yeah. all of this. So I've made the mistakes of giving to the big charities and not knowing, thinking I was doing the right thing. I had to forgive myself when I realized how toxic it was and how absolutely abusive it was. I didn't know. But here's the difference. You Once you know, you change the behavior. You don't repeat it. You don't do it again. Yes. Well, you know? the thing is, is I don't even, I mean, I would say you don't even, you were, you were unaware. So you don't need to Thanks, forgive yourself. You just change the, the pattern. And it's like, ah, I was doing this from a place of ignorance and not like it's an ignorant because, because they, don't, they don't tell you I'm going to be trafficking children with your money. I no. am not going to give feed the hungry. I am not going to do this. I'm going to launder it. And 
you know, you live a They're wonderful life. You, right? No, yeah. but my I intentions learned. were good. My actions did not, I didn't do the homework. Yes. Am I mad at myself? No, I've forgiven myself, but I don't do it again. And look what I'm doing now. Yeah. And I think when you go to that, when the fasting and the prayer, it's mm -hmm. what I've always wondered because I grew up Catholic, right? And the whole ritual of church, right? The whole, I've always thought, you know what? If God or creator or whatever is so above everything, why does he need this? How does this thing like puppets make a difference to this omnipotent God? Doesn't God just know who you are in your heart? And your actions speak instead of following a ritual. And that goes back to that tradition. Let it all go. You need to follow your heart because that's the divine knows your heart. Where that is, that's where you, you know, how you're going to go where you belong. It's remembering who you are, not these rituals. And, and it's not to say that there isn't some incredible pastors out there. So you look at Henry Hildebrand. He's from St. Thomas, I think. He was at the rallies. He does a lot of speaking at the rallies. I have I've shaken his hand, not that I've spoken to him other than saying pray, pray for me when he goes up on the vehicle, whatever, to speak on the stage. He's a decent man. And you can still see some of these pastors are decent, but you go because you want to hear the inspiration from him, not that you've got to connect to God from him. He doesn't say that word. We're losing he some juice here, ladies. Are you? How are we doing now? Okay. I'm doing okay. All we got to was... Um, you shook his hand and then it all so Henry off. Hildebrand is a decent man. He's Mennonite. He comes out to the rallies and he speaks. But sometimes you can go to church because you want the inspiration from that person who's speaking no different than we're talking now. It doesn't have to be in a church, but he's decent. He is no. some form of Mennonite. I'm only um, putting that label on because that is how he is identified. He, he, like you can tell by the clothes. But you know what's interesting? Where uh, anything north of the 401, Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, Wellington uh, County uh, Health Unit shut down all the Mennonite churches and all the schools because they had COVID fears. So they they punished the whole group of Mennonite communities within their churches and their schools because this man spoke up and identified as Mennonite. That's well, the only reason I can see they did it. Like, you know what they're like. They go after everybody. So they, they, yeah. they penalize everybody. So now everybody's talking about the Mennonites and COVID and how they're the problem and creates hate for them. I think one no. of the things we got to look at, though, too, is that from when you look at a point of a church, right? It doesn't matter if it's nonprofit or profit. It's an institution. They're still rendering to Caesar. They're still collecting usury, which is just another form of tithing which is another form of taxation. And that is Caesarian. Not only that, we have to remember that all churches, every church, and I don't even like to use that word, are institutions. They're monetary, profit, nonprofit, doesn't matter. They are violating all the original treaties of the original peoples, whether they're clan, tribes, whatever, but they are technically violating the international peace treaties of this land, whether you want to call it Turtle Island, North America, doesn't matter. And a lot of them as well, we have known, have been actually part of the trafficking cartels. And, and so I'm this not is, supporting churches, right? I'm, I'm not, just saying this pastor. Right. No, I heard you isolate that. But the other thing, too, is that that is a violation of the original tribes to even be here, to coexist in harmony with the peace treaties, not 1 to 11, but the original Noah's Ark peace pipe, you know, that's what Scott McKay's out, but what the original peace pipe treaties are and, or wampum belts down in the East or with us, Noah's Ark, whatever, or Solomon seal is an entire thing for all the tribes of Israel, uh, blacks and Arab tribes. There's still a peace treaty and any violations that can be removed. I think we need to look at in here too, with the COVID, with the trafficking, what the other agenda is. Every little road in a supposedly church, and I use that term loosely, goes back to Rome, which has now just been bankrupt in the Buckingham Palace in Washington, D.C. To enforce that, those paradigms or parameters are being broken now, which people need to really open up their eyes and see what they were funding. Yes. And I think one of the best set of books that we do is clan mothers or whatever you want to say, tribe mothers or whatever you want to call like, you know, bear mamas, whatever we are, is that it's about going back to nature. And if you look at international law, 
it's not in an institution. It's out in nature. That's why tribal law is called natural law. It's not common law. It's natural law. And part of that is going back. And that's why I always suggest people read the ringing cedars of Russia because it's all in there. Life is living. Gaia, the mother, is a living energy. Whether we want to say creator, Manitou, there's many different words that we use. You know, Yubyatabat. Anyway, Diboja, there's a lot of things that we use. And that creative energy and feminine, divine feminine is there. It's not in a church. Even the legal, if you really know, most people don't know this. This is why they call the judges. Do you know why they call it? The bench. You know where they bench? on the outside. It's not in an institution. It's not in the courthouse. Okay. The deals are done on the bench. That's why they have their own private meetings out, outside. Okay. It's the same thing when you talked about getting together, the church meant to be the Holy communion, the male and the female creating that third thing, whether we call it a peace pipe, that's because it's the Chinupa and Canupa. You know, there are many different forms, the female bull and the male, whatever, but it comes together as a third thing. And the, the prayers of them would go up to the heavens. That was the point of it, whether you used frankincense and myrrh or herbs or kanikanik or, you know, ceremonial tobacco. But well, the that, word that, that you used was to... ritual. It's a ritual for marriage. Yes. That's the divine coming together. And so Sandy's right. When you screw that up and violate natural law or the creator's law with the transgendering, with the GMOs, they are, in essence, killing the soul of our children. And when you get down to the emotional part of where the feminine is or the masculine, that's your creation. And they are destroying the soul of these children. They will lock them in like a grid that they will never access the heavens, so to speak, or the higher chakras. And so we have to be really, really careful about this because this whole agenda, you know, like we we're just talking because in Alberta, I said I got to call it uh, – Ontario is going to lock down. Saskatchewan's going to be an extended to like, you know, April 26th, right? Um, and then there was a lockup. There's a fence put right around there. But we have to look at that church and what was going on. I've got a bunch of friends, you know, in, in Saskatoon that want to run over to the, you know, to the pastor's thing because the RCMP came and locked it up. Do you really know what's underneath? Maybe there are child trafficking things. There are many things going on that people aren't aware of, you know, that has to do with the trafficking, and the public is not going to be advised because the revolution or evolution is not for public disclosure. It's not going to be monetized or put out there and commercialized. So I just wanted to add that, but I really suggest everything you said, the Bible is a sex code book. It's all about the penalties of doing this. And so-and-so begets so-and-so when you intercourse with someone, which becomes the Congress. Yes. You know, and then the lawyers have their treaty because you've been sold as a woman, as a commodity, as a piece of chattel and traded on the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. So we have or as a utility, you know, which people can look up their own birth certificate. I have 165 um, organizations own my birth certificate, trade my birth certificate. I know. Anyway, yeah. When you look that up, you can look up, you know, or if they want to look, you know, what you can do but we, we've been putting that out for so long i've known about this for two decades how they're trafficking and that trafficking starts with you before they it, you've been trafficked in a way spiritually before even the children have been physically yeah we yeah. well our straw man is trafficked every day on the yeah. stock exchange and actually i want to you said something really profound at the beginning of this and when about the marriage ceremony and the bull and the female coming together and the third that's the child that's actually the true holy trinity Mother, yes, father, father, child. child. Mother, that's father, child. And that's, and that's what they took out of, that's what they took out of the Bible. That's what they took out of religion because they made it very patriarchal instead of, it's without the three, you have nothing. Mother, right. father, child. It, three men do make, make zero, right? There's no yeah. creation there. Mother is the creation. Yes. Mother, and that's when you take that out, and that's what they've done to our entire society. They've taken that female, wonderful mother essence out and replaced the sacred it with mother. a toxic female. Yes. It's a toxic female that you have out there right now. This backbiting, um, you know, hier hierarchical women that are just toxic. They think their shit doesn't stink and because they are, their yeah. lips move that they can tell you to do anything, whether they know you or not. Like this is the female right now that just doesn't know when to stay in her lane. 
Yeah. Mind your own business, create a best life for yourself, but they're running around doing this. And I'd heard once that it was the women who ran the day-to-day -day operations at Oswich. Any surprise there? Nope. Yeah. No, that's a female owner's Yeah. There's yeah, we a whole thing. Well, there, I was watching, I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, but I did, there was a new documentary out from po uh, Poland on human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And it's this guy interviewing a broker, a woman broker who brokers children's sales, a girl who's actually pregnant that's selling her child. And he actually spoke to the trafficker, right? And what would, did the trafficker say? Who takes care of these children in the houses? It's the women. women. And so he's how shit. brutal they can be. I know. Women abuse emotionally and, spirit and sexually. Males tend to abuse more physically and sexually because emotions are our wheelhouse, but it doesn't mean we can't destroy people emotionally. Oh, yeah. We choose, right? We know, we, I know we all know that, right? But just, I'm just saying that. So anybody watching this later, women have a lot of explaining to do for the absolute insanity. They're the ones pushing the transgender agenda. Mm -hmm. When you ask them, what's the difference between their clitoris and their vagina? They can't tell you. They don't not know nothing about their own sexuality. They can't talk about love. They don't know what it means to love themselves or articulate it. They just know they want the power of being able to dictate what other people do. And that's the old toxic femininity that you're talking about. That's what needs to be called out. I'm not excusing male behavior. Males have to step up and start asking what it takes for them to be the divine masculine. What does it take to be in their higher essence? What does integrity look like? What does leadership look like? How do you discipline with a gentle spirit? We have to, we have to hold the men to a higher standard. And some of them are looking right now, yes, but they, they are. are looking for the women to be able to describe it because their moms never told them. I think that's a really valid point in there that Sandy makes is that mm -hmm. we have now gone into so many different generations of this. Is it, a lot of the younger men don't know who to look up to because they've been disconnected from that divine feminine or divine mother. Mm -hmm. I've done so many different clients, male and female, but in, in this case where you'll have males actually getting emotional and crying because they haven't felt, they go, is this what love feels like? Everyone yeah. should feel this cared. And some of my best people that were out helping me for the last years were some of the males because they were so disconnected. And mm -hmm. we seem to forget that, that again, they came in, they, they put this smoke and mirror, the whole Queen Elizabeth and Hillary Rodden Clinton and, and, and even Oprah, well, not she's transgender and stuff, but you know, you get a lot of them. They want to become, okay. Why are they doing this? They're trying to imitate us because they are such psychopathic, dislocated, disconnected. And some of them are soulless. Yeah. You know, we talked just, you know, I know you talked a little bit earlier, but there's things like soul to soul transfer. They have this technology within the, the governments in what they're doing. They have the ability to take a soul out and put it into either a clone or put it into someone else or actually take it off the planet, maybe to Saturn, back to Satan, back to hell. Okay. So we have to look at technologies and become one aware of it too, and bring these children back and then have to be bringing them back into their own avatars and get them to be able to focus again properly because they've been out there like, like lost souls. There's yeah. another video out there that they're showing. They're going to business like conventions and showing where you put the avatar and they've got them in a fluid and they're saying, you can put your soul in this one. If you don't like that, you can take it out and put it in another one. This is business on planet earth. And I can't remember what video, I don't know if I have it. Yeah, I posted it. I posted it on, um, on was uh, it you? Telegram. Telegram? Yeah, I was, okay, I was so that, out yesterday and I posted it yesterday morning. Right. So let's, how do we keep how do we keep the younger generations who want to find the answers, who want to find themselves, who want to stand in their truth? How do we show them and let them know you can talk to any of us and we're not here to we're not here to babysit or mother you. We're here to give you information that you might not have got. And what I find when I work with some of the younger ones, they're like, yeah, they know it. They know it. They just need to be have it, the information confirmed or know how to go in and access their own feelings and know they have the right to stand up and understand why they're given all the wrong information in universities mm -hmm. and know they have the power and they, it's their right to stand up and be divine themselves because they're not getting it at home. They're not getting it from the moms, especially the ones who are all the left brain moms who are just out killing it now for a job and a paycheck. And they're basically chicks with dicks, right? They're male energy in a feminine body. But the divine feminine knows that's their higher chakras, as Karen saying, that's our higher ability to connect. This is why they shut the men down or the women down, whatever, 500 years ago, because they can't keep up with us.
But that doesn't mean that we're better than, it just means we have different abilities, but we each have to decide whether we operate with integrity within those abilities or not. Absolutely. Yeah, so right. cool, yeah, one of the cool things I was just looking at, actually right before I started talking to you guys today, they go, oh my gosh, you guys are on. Um, I was listening to called uh, Elena Dannon, and she actually had someone on called Honor Lottery today. And it was all about looking at these souls and what, what they're actually doing, how it affects the divine feminine, which was very cool. Interesting. One of, the, one of the things too, is that I started looking, cause I'm, I'm developing again with the genius biofeedback, how we identify, is it hormones? Cause I mean, we have to take these in children, whether male or female, whatever they've tried to do or transgender and put their hormones back first because they've been jacked up, whether directly or indirectly through even just daily food, right? and mm -hmm. waters because of the poison. So that's the first thing to correct is these toxins. Second thing is, is to use these kind of technologies and put these children back because they are disconnected. But one of the things I was just on this morning looking at, which kind of ties into what you were saying and the book that we um, looked at that I went, I trained with Dr. Carolyn Mean for a month with Dr. Ariel Paulo Cano is that even the essential oils can go in and it, it can really ease the sense of anger. It calms the tension, but there's an entire thing that um, some women's blends that were, can be developed or just copied for in the healing with the relationships with their mothers, their grandmothers, other women, because that's where the strain has been, whether you're a male or a female, there's that strain on the separation of the loss, the abuse in the relationship, which then relates to both the femininity and I, I don't like the word sexuality, but in sacred love making. And that yes. starts with ourselves first because if one's rejected their, we'll just say feminine energy, this, you know, stuff oils can be used to help heal their wounds and find that balance in connecting with their feminine side, whoever they are. So I was looking at putting some protocols, you know, in today to the genius actually with patchouli, bergamot, sandalwood, rose, jasmine, cinnamon, cystis, vetiver, ylang ylang and all sorts of things. Because what happens is you have over masculine, blocked or imbalanced female energy and that's unteachable it becomes anger irritability a tough exterior where you can get you know instead of being the humility the kindness the softness the teachability things like that so that's where the individuals have to let go of their pride and get over this and when we place these things over let's say the, the liver or do different things like with affirmations or tapping or nlp or whatever we're going to do whether you put it on your feet but there are something very similar things and that came into something called Sara, which was Gary Young put this out. It was designed at 102 hertz, which meant it goes just between the belly button and the perineum. That's where that second chakra is. So it was designed at 102 hertz, which was a combination of geranium, uh, ylang ylang, rose, blue tansy. And all these things were made up of about six or eight oil blends, but specifically designed to go in and cut the cords or, or change that thing of what we call toxic relationships, which you said very clearly was ritual, Catholic church rituals, rites, rites of passage, the first night's rite. And this is where we see a lot of incense and stuff too. So those are just something I thought people really need to look at. That's why we use this technology. Sandy's got an innate gift, but there are lots of people that don't. And so even for that, I can muscle test 60,000 things. I can go in there, not only in hurts, but with the herb, with the oil that these people that or any of us need. I don't care if it's cancer or COVID. <laughs> Crazy. And we need both, right? Because uh, there's times where I can be discombobulated and I'm like, yeah. Karen, run a series on me, right? Because I can't get myself regulated again. But I also like going in with the conscious energy because when you know and you feel it in your body, that allows you to raise your own consciousness higher because you start feeling what everything feels like. You feel right. the pain, you feel the pleasure, you feel the happiness, you feel the joy, you feel when somebody's not telling you the truth truth yeah. and that organically picks up your conscious abilities so i agree we need both of those and karen so many people have been hurt they're going to need the biofeedback to get them to even feel what love feels like in their body but then they're also going to need more to be able to embody it and trust going forward which they can only do with their mind and their heart so both of these all in conjunction all of these things even what betty does like betty and i are on the same page and so many things too right we need all of it and I, I think that that's a really uh, important part here that when you are looking at things, when we have people that are been traumatized and this is the condemning, like, especially whether we're talking the lesbian, gay, whatever, 
they are so mentally disconnected, i.e., and I don't mean this, they're mental basket cases and, you know, crying all over the place, but what it is is there's a, a chakra disconnection. Totally. And chakra, self esteem. Yeah. From the root chakra into everything to this. They hate fifth, themselves. Sixth, seventh, they hate themselves. It's self hating, self loathing, self poor self image. And then you get the self abuse, which ties into the addiction factor and then ties into self mutilation. So by the so, time they want to actually kill, they're killing themselves and that they've turned the whole individual instead of, you know, this anger. Instead of aspiring to be the best they can, they're imploding. Yes. It's an implosion. I am going to say this. I've said this before, but many of the males that I've worked with that were sexually, that are gay, were sexually abused as boys. And that's how their body learned to ejaculate and feel pleasure at the hands of a man. They're not gay. They, it's just how their body was trained. Yeah. And if the experts don't know this, why the hell are they the experts? Why are people turning to them if they don't know whoever was there first creates the pathway? So yep. many women are abused by males. So they're still in heterosexual relationships, but it, that pattern, whoever got there first creates the pathway. And that's why I'm just, it, it, there's nobody out there who does not know my sentiment towards the mental health monkeys and those ass hats right now that they are absolutely pedophilic to the core. They either get off on the abuse and hearing the stories of the pain or they're one of them. And I don't care which one I've, I've had people tell me that they went to see a psychiatrist after they reported their sexual abuse from their father and a psychiatrist gave them a banana and said, show me where your dad put it. Re-traumatizing them all over again. Yeah. These fuckers all need to be called out. So a lot of the people that we're talking about that we're, we're saying that you don't forgive them. They're people who work in the system. Don't have to. Totally. So, and they're not sorry. They're, they're not sorry. They're not sorry. We just, any pain that caused patient. you, you need to release. But you need to release. Forgiven. We release the pain. They're not forgiven. No, they have to own They're their not stuff. forgiven and they will stand judgment for their actions. Not by me. Yes. Not by you or, or anybody else. Anyone. We just release the pain. <laughs> <laughs> I am doing it. It's called Clama. There's war peace. You know, I have both swords. And you know what? There is no forgiveness in this case. There's no we forgiveness like, in some of we don't, we don't take prisoners here. No. Okay. And the thing is that just like even it doesn't matter if Trump was saying when you commit that crime, if you are devoid of having a soul, you're not devoid of heart. There is not such a thing as rehabilitation no. on or off this planet. So, yes, we have a death penalty into place, which has been now put back into formal law because a, exactly of this. Exactly. There's a this. rumor that says 40% uh, of people who were abused as children re-abuse other children. Exactly. Well, if 75%, according to statistics, 75% are women, that means 40% of the abusers are like, there's a big portion of them that are women, but they don't tell you that the experts don't tell you that, but it's the women who are doing the trafficking, women who are running Auschwitz, women who are suppressing the families, women who are shaming their children or shaming other children to get ahead, shaming other people. And again, mm -hmm. I'm not blaming, I'm not giving the men a pass. You have to own your shit too. But we yeah, are going to start with the women. Women have gotten a pass forever. Too long, yes. Too yeah. long on propagating this bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, we've been hysterical. But yeah, sure, we've gotten our shit. But on the damage we have done generation after generation after generation, they have not had to own that. No. And when you talk about hysteria, we're hysterical. Think of when you take the female sex organs out. It's called a hysterectomy. Exactly. It's yeah. all done to destroy the female. So the female is, is wired for um, a, a wider range of emotion. One, because we're women and we're here with the children. We can be very immature because we're meant to play with the children when we're, they're young, when they're our younger children. We're meant to be able to play with them. Our nervous systems are wired differently. We're a little more high strung because we're hyper alert. We're also hyper, um, we, can, we can sense things that other people can't see going on. So that's the nervous system and how it's wired. So it's not, so I listened to, um, I won't say who it is. It doesn't matter. I might've said this before, but I was listening to him on stage and he's talking about 12 year old girls have hysteria. And I'm like, you stupid shit. Does it cross your mind that their hormones are changing? They're getting, coming into puberty. They're becoming women and their sexuality is coming on board. And as the sexuality comes on board, the body is reliving a memory of where they were sexually abused as a child or maybe consciously forgot it. Mm -hmm. Oh, but when we do shame them right out of the gate at 12, oh, they're hysterical. If you've got a child who's got high emotions, find out what, what it is. Is it a hormone imbalance? You know, Karen talks about hormone imbalances. Is there a hormone that's out of balance? Is there something that they don't know how to process? Do they not know how to 
um, process of question or something that comes up uh, that they want to know, find out what it is to help them get that more in a range that's manageable for them. Absolutely. But we don't, we shame them. Oh, you're hysterical. Uh, my favorite line might be go fuck yourself, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, also a cop out. it's also a cop out because if you just say you're being hysterical, you put it back on them and you don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, this well, this is shaming well, too. Like, that's why they have rites of passage, right? So, yeah, you're uh, very you skinny, Karen. We're getting a lot of feedback. Just click your mouse. Click your mouse on the screen. Usually, is what it takes. Yeah, they um, basically what we had was what was called rites of passage, and that's what they did. They had the lodges, but you would have the the clan mothers or the tribe mother, one of the two, come in, but they would actually do the yoni or the vaginal steaming. That was the original intent of the red intent of the red lodge. And this was so that the women were, again, in those things. And again, this is a community bringing up, but that's where the, the older women helped raise and help nurture, not like in this culture where they throw everyone into a nursing home and just want them to die of some like PCR test and, and jab right now. But, you know, what we're seeing is that that community was very integral. And so when you look at what happened when the women were transitioning or even children, but that was an actual special thing where you got together with all your you know, star sisters or whatever the sisters and you would sit down and, and welcome that woman in. And that's why. Yes. An honor. Yeah. That's why I'm really happy to see what's called womb trauma, but re-wombing, re-virginizing. Cause as Sandy said, there's cellular memory, there's past life cellular memory that's being put in there. And that's why we specialize in what's called womb trauma but womb healing, but that's where like, uh, I'm just talking, talking actually right now with uh, Lisa Kelly at Red Tent Wellness. So I think every woman and every man should know about something like Red Tent Wellness where they're teaching these integral teachings. And it's the only school that I've been to because I've been to several that actually brings in what Sandy and you are talking about. They're bringing in the spiritual aspect. They're bringing in that ancestral healing. They're bringing in the herbs, the oils, the, the, the navel belly button candling is huge or uh, navel, what we call maxibushin because of those sacred cords that they're trying to cut off, yeah. you know, and, and we have to remember that when you're in the womb, you are connected to all your mothers to all time and memorial. And we need to reconnect. That's part of what we're doing through that. Even putting essential oils on the belly button, you know, you totally. we're you your belly button, blue tansy. So what your belly button's blue. Who's looking at your belly button that you don't yeah. want to see your belly button, right? But it yeah. just and it just gives you the energy, the boost. It's incredible. And what you're saying, Karen, shame when we look at uh, David um, Hawkins. Hawkins, yeah. So physical death is 25. Shame is 20. When people shame you for not wearing a mask or not getting a vaccine or not kissing their ass, yeah, they are basically trying to kill you emotionally and energetically and consciously. Right. You don't, you, everybody can do what they want to do. Everybody's got the right to do what they want to do. But my point is when somebody's shaming you, that's the technique that they use. So I, I watched Charles Adler uh, just go out and uh, rip, um, rip into Chris Sky about this guy's, you know, his dad's a rich man. And otherwise he wouldn't be able to go running around and breaking all the rules about COVID. And it's like Charles Adler, what now you're a medical ex expert, but he uses shame. Oh, you're just there because your daddy's rich. Grow the fuck up. And yeah. that's to Charles Adler, right? And if you say anything to him, he blocks you. Well, then that's all right, too, right? Because then he doesn't have to hear what you have to say standing up for somebody else, right? And I, I think we got to look at, too, a lot of these people, children. I mean, this was like whether you call the, the grooming of the, you know, fourth right was to be the children. I mean, it starts through gaming. It starts for what they're seeing, the Flickr technology. Some of us are a little impervious to it because we were still – you know, raised with kind of the Brady Bunch kind of idea. I don't want to get into their happy days, but, you know, which is a whole other thing. But again, we we didn't have the amount of chemicals. We had four vaccines, not 80 some screwing up our brain. Especially as children, right? As we're growing, we didn't oh, have that. That whole development is so, so integral. And I mean, that's what we see with child protection or the Illuminati will come in because this is bloodline cultivating, you know, I know I, 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 you know, I've been part of this and investigating this and lived through this stuff, but it's very much part of the bloodline targeting, especially if you're RH positive because you have original Gaia bloodline. So what they're doing is they're trying to kill Gaia. They're trying to kill the mother and the spirit of this entire. Totally. You know, they want us all AI. Planet. 
AI. They want, they want us all this AI, and that's what the oxygen levels. Listening to um, Alex Collier said in 1996, we used to be at 34% oxygen that's in right. the atmosphere. Then we're at 17. He says physical death happens at 15. All you people wearing a mask and keeping your carbon dioxide to yourself, you're not feeding the plants who are going to create oxygen. Yep. So just get the job and get her done, right? Get it over with. <sighs> this you know, kind of stuff, you know, say. people. Yeah, they just don't realize the repercussions of it. And right now they're kind of, you know, beyond that. You know, and it was funny because I was talking to someone who's the same thing with Sandy right the other day. You know, I said, what the fuck? And they were, don't swear, right? You know, they, it was, they were very biblical. I said, do you actually know what it means? <laughs> well, it's a swear. I said, no, see, you just were taught that. Yeah. I said, it actually is an acronym, you know, like, you know, something stands for something with a period. It actually should have a period in, under after each letter, but it's to fuck under consent of the king to fornicate is to fornicate under the consent of the king the kingdom or in that case the monarchy that means you are allowed to do it or first night's rights you will see a lot of these things and i just learned something now there was there was an incident in toronto right and they called it training right which is where they will take one if not two of their knights or their illuminati cult death cults or you know the m16 or whatever you want to say these gangs are and they will train a woman, so they will gang rape her. But to is to put two guys to a woman, uh, which is also called a 101, you know. But this is the kind of stuff that happens, and it happens daily. Like, I mean, I was even dealing with a case, you know, that actually the cabal NATO came up to an actual Indian reserve, surrounded it, scrambled all their communications and phones so they couldn't phone out for over a month, and they took all the children. Okay. And they've been raping the women. So this is, and this is in, you know, between Canada and the States, this is like fresh in the last month. So people really, you know, if they don't know what the hell's going on, their heads are in the sand. Yep. You know, and as Sandy said, if they're stupid enough to take themselves out, well, that's one less, you know, we have to deal with. But what's happening is that they've co-opted our children into going along like lummings. And if we don't stop it now, there will be no human race or the tribals or the clans and this is the time that we've you know like birds of a feather flock together well i look at your order to see what kind of an order we're flocking together with these days and if nothing else biofeedback's a great just to see what kind of a mood you're in so even if you see what your aura looks like because i can tell when they've been hitting me with 5g you know this kind of thing so you know most of it is inner technology it always should be but it when you've got is. When you've got people disconnected, when you've got them taking MSG and, and they're taking Saskatoon's fluoridated water every day, they don't have an inner compass. They've lost their moral compass, their, <laughs> you know, intuition, um, their knowing, the innate the knowledge, yeah. Yeah. their ethnicity, and they have no ethics anymore. Yeah. They can easily be swayed or like the masking. That's the whole thing is subjugation. Your high will is up here. If you look in that blue book. I don't know if you've ever looked into Sandy, but there's a whole, there's two pages. I'm going to flip it open. There's Which two pages there? in the back where the diagrams are. So you, you have an oil reference, you have a body code reference, you have the atomical reference. And then the last part will be about six pages, which have actually diagrams that will show you the points. So the two points I'm talking about are just on the head alone. But there is also one for the uterus, one for the penis. So you mean the charts, right? Yes, the charts, yeah. Okay. So if you look at that, there's one down there that says cervix, and there's another one that says prostate. You have all that area. So there's the area we're looking at. But when you go into what they're masking too, there's another one with just the heads. There's two pages of just the head part. You will see that the higher will is up here. They are masking you to cut off all those emotional ties to the heavens. So depression, there we go. Addiction, third eye self-love, all those things. But when you look at what do they want? When they kill someone and they take you, they want you to do your last will and testament, take your mind from mind control. So it's very, very much in there. Like you talk about the hormones, right? What are the words? Hiss, hysterectomy, her, her hysterectomy. You're, you're destroying the feminine, the hysteria. But also in there is, you know, the words like moan. What does it take to make a hormone? And we think these words are negative, but if you go back to before the scriptures, you had the Enki, Enil, and the other one is called the Nin or the Nuns, the Hor, H-U-R, or Nor. So it was the Hor or the Nor, Nurses, Heg, 
or SAG. So we'll just say the nun, whore, or nor SAG, it was a bloodline. It was a pure bloodline that went back 45,000 years. We need so many new learning institutions that share all this knowledge. And it's interesting on yeah. that book, when you look at your eminences, those little horns on your head. Yeah, exactly. It talks, it talks about them, the emotional points, but you can also measure those with your own hands and feel them if yeah. they're vibrating and they're all alternating and they're not pulsing at the same time. Feel those little horns on your head. Yeah. If you can feel them very lightly, they should be pulsing at the same time in the same intensity going boom. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Exactly. And I can go in and get out of fight, flight, and freeze by putting my mind, my hand here, putting my mind right in the middle and making it go boom, boom, boom. But I've cleaned it out with enough people so that I can I can command it now if I feel myself going into something, right? It's interesting. Oh, a lot of people don't realize that when we're doing Vitaflex reflexology, this is like I said, they got a basic class and then there's like advanced or what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. And in and here, yeah. those things we did in the main drop technique with Dr. Gary Young. Yeah. If anyone's <laughs> ever left the very basics, they should go look that. But what yeah. happens is you would put your left hand on their left foot because they were lying on the massage table and right. right. Because you were connecting a circuit. When you look at the yes. books by Manchester. Yes. You have a, a, a yin yang, -yang but you've got to have the third circuit. And that's what the coal is, by the way. That's your Tesla coil. That's where the integration happens. That's where your soul is. It's in the that's why they chakra. want everybody having anal sex and screwing that up. Exactly. The so then when you put your hands in that, you're creating a thing. So we would hold. So they don't teach this kind of stuff in Reiki. Oh, we're just going to hold that, see if it kind of feels blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, we're going to go to your 16 different points, which is so basic and which is a cult in itself. But anyway, you go in here and like, Sandy was talking. There are so many points. I mean, whether people do access bars or whatever, you know, the thing is there's a reason why, and they don't even know the actual spiritual part before. They're just taught to put hands like this. Yes. But the thing is, if they're at a lower chakra, if they're in their shame, they're in their whatever, guess who's bringing you down? This whole thing. You know thing what? About Hundred percent, Karen. Because I was, um, I took the access bars, and the 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 person who was training it, her boyfriend decided he wanted to come in that day, and I ended up having to work with him. And I was, I was in a salt room, and yeah. I was walking along. I didn't want to scrap my scrape my back on the salt, and the bed was too close to the wall, so I leaned in a bit. And he goes, "Oh, I got a beautiful, strong woman on on top of me. My lucky day. I can ruin an erection in seconds." I lean down, I sit in my chair and I look at him and I go, you talk to women that way? No wonder you guys have so many fucking problems with women. Anyway, so that took care of that. I worked on him for a little bit and then we switched later. He tried to run his energy through me. So yeah. his ego was so involved and I had to pull my head out of his hands. And I said to the instructor, I said, do you mind talking to him? He's trying to run his energy through me. Then he got mad because it was, it was just a shit show. So intentionality is everything. Even in the courses you take, you have to know yeah. the people who you're taking the courses with have the integrity to make sure that whoever you're working with has um, aligned with the highest good and not trying to pull a fast one. Yeah. Exactly yeah. what you're saying. I didn't mean to jump in on that, but it's so important to no, understand but, that yeah. people's intentions can can shake you up and then make them get in and steal your energy. Well, and one of the, the the cute little words they like to use all the time is I'm a light worker. I'm not doing anything. It's for this and I'm giving it to light. I said, have you ever thought about the words even light and dark? Maybe dark is the Ark of the Covenant and maybe light is from Lucifer Venetian. And the morning light, which is Luciferian. So have you ever thought about the actual words you use? And to work is to whore for the king. I said, I'm not a light worker. I said, just keep saying that to yourself. Because you guys are babbling on. That's where it's we say yeah. people that know. Not so much knew it, but it's, you speak with forked tongue. You know, and we are responsible for keeping on our mother's tongue. So, yeah, whatever. You're speaking English. We were all scooped up and put into these stupid schools. But the other line is that where's your, where's your mom's? language from like four, five, six, seven, eight generations ago. They mean you got to have your original customs, usages and laws to, to even say that you're a sovereign, that the military will recognize you in the international courts. Great luck with that people. Cause they don't have, and the so women that have lost the rights. So when they talk about the Scottish rights and the York rights and the rights of this and the, the Masonic 33 rights, and then you're above, they all have like extra little things, but the bottom line is they don't have the right to do that. Because they're not the females. They're not the, the head of the pyramid was 13 kilometers. And they were there to be the, the, the purity, the essence of Gaia. Not where they inverted, like Pat, like uh, Sunny was saying, invert the pyramid the other way and, and cut it off. That's your whole inversion you know, technology. So I think we need to be really clear 
That's why I don't let people touch me. There are very few ascending, you guys know, <laughs> that come around me, even we in my space, this. because I don't want those people even there. I've been asked so many times, where's your, your, your center? I said, I shut it down 10 years ago. I've already given like into the hood, like for 10, 15, 20 years in my, you know, 40 year nursing career. Why? Because I wouldn't have those people come into my home. My home is a temple. My space, wherever I just am, not what's above and below and whatever. My space, no smoking, no drinking, no alcohol, no carnivores, i.e., as you guys think, meat eaters, which really means to come together and meet, but no people there to eating animals. Okay? Raw living, getting into health. If you can't emulate that, why would I allow you? That's what a church is to find your boundaries. You know, and like I said, there's nothing worse than looking at people that these women now, and I use the term loosely, loosely, yeah, <laughs> very loosely, right? If your vagina doesn't make you a woman. That's that's correct. There's nothing <laughs> divine and feminine. I see all these girls tatted up all over the place. I see piercings all over the place, interfering with reflexology points. Like here's your, your, your you know, your um, diatanum and stuff like that. But your third chakra, your whatever into the clitoris, into the tongue, into where your mother, a lot of them, when they want you to push the actual earrings, that is actually a mother's point. So if Sandy shows up in that blue book again, there's a whole diagram of auricular therapy, just the emotions on a higher, again, fifth to sixth chakra. And you start doing ear piercings, guess what? You're blocking your mother in the fifth, sixth chakra. So start looking at what they're doing. Everything there's is planned. Everything, everything is designed to destroy people. Yeah. There's nothing worse than me taking a woman that thinks she's in pain, chronic pain, Crohn's, this, that, needs a hysterectomy, whatever, because they violated nature's law. Because, again, we haven't had people in leading properly for a long time. And the other thing, too, is there's nothing more grosser is to actually see um, something about this color coming out of your vagina. Because it happens, and it happens, people, when I actually do those womb or yoni herb pills that get inserted like a tampon for a couple of days. So after you do that, and that's where your parasite cleansings came, by the way, to get rid of what people have been raped, traumatized, three months, every three days, they get a new herb tampon in to get rid of anything disease, to kill the sperm, anything it was killing, or when the fathers or other men rape the children. That telegony is the right word, actually, that Sandy was talking about, how that energy is there with for life but that is in their festering like a bad candida infection when they, that sperm comes in and it sits there in a physical and that's why the steaming and those pearls are used to kill it it's like mm -hmm. cutting the cords to the rapist the perpetrator and that's why all these girls that are even being transgendered and the boys too they should be on those steam chairs asap <laughs> and power every day womb trauma yeah. yeah, perpetrators yeah. cutting that. Well, guys, very, very we're, we're hitting almost we're two way hours. Over. <laughs> we're way, way over. We're hitting two hours. Um, Karen, thanks so much for being our surprise guest. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And Sandy, as always, amazing. We're going to be back always every fun. Friday at 11 right now. Is that what yeah, that we're works? At? That works for next week, too. Yes. Perfect. And uh, any last words, Karen, before we say goodbye? I'll let you go first and then Sandy. So we're talking uh, about forgiveness. Let's tie it to the theme of forgiveness if we can. Just I, I was going to. Event. Yeah. Actually, it's coming right here. I didn't see the topic today. Um, forgiving is mean forgiving to you. It does not mean giving someone else, as Sandy would say, a pass. That's not allowable. You've broken your boundaries. And we need to know that the only one that deserves anything is you, not anyone that has violated you in any way, shape or form. I don't care if it's a violation of whatever the 10 code or the 10 commandments is. You are to put nothing between you and the creator. The minute you allow that or someone violates that, they need to be charged. And in this case, you know, with the pit of field, they'll, they'll be killed. I mean, that's an executable death penalty thing right there, which is going to be put back on the books, by the way. So let's go back to forgiving ourselves. That's the only one that deserves anything. Everything else is a moot point. And I think we need to put ourselves back into place first. And I really think that's an excellent place to start. That book Sandy showed you and shared that we have is excellent. That's where you got to start. It's all, it's inner tech. And um, 
that's where it becomes. And say that you love you. So in, in my thing, use it in your mother's tongue, by the way. English is, is terrible. Even in that book, I switched that book into your mother's tongue. So yeah, you get to back. The Borgia Cecile. Thank you. And you can reach me at clanmother13 at gmail.com. Thanks, Karen. Sandy? So forgiveness um, was the topic that we're looking at with fresh eyes today. And um, when Betty and I were talking about this, and we don't believe a lot of what we've been told. And yeah, we do speak English. It doesn't matter. It's what is happening right now. But we also speak in symbology and we speak in imagery. And when we can clear out our emotional patterns, forgive yourself. You can forgive others for certain things. Sometimes they didn't know, but if they're still transgressing on you, you do not cut them any slack. Sometimes I made mistakes in my youth. I've asked for forgiveness, but I stopped doing the behavior. So it still comes down to owning the choices you make. We all make mistakes. So it's not about being regimented or militant about it, but know if you've made a mistake, that if you feel you owe somebody apology, apologize to them. And an apology says, uh, apology sounds like, I'm sorry, I did A, B, and C, and I never realized how much that hurt you. I am so sorry for what I did to you. An apology isn't, please forgive me. That's not an apology, because that you're putting on the other person. So if you've made mistakes, cut yourself some slack if you can. Forgive yourself. Apologize where necessary. If you're going to create more harm, don't apologize to that person publicly if, if they aren't aware of what you've done. But um, together, we have to work together on the grander scale. But to do that, we come from our highest self. And to do that, we clean out our crap, which is things we've done wrong. Um, we're standing up for self, understanding what other people have done wrong. If their intention is Ill, they're ill-intended, nothing is going to change it. That's what the real mental illness is, ill-intention. You want to harm sense. somebody else to get ahead, right? So keep it in mind. And you can reach me at Sandy at endinggloballoneliness.com. I know Betty always puts our stuff up, and uh, which is wonderful. And I'm very grateful for being able to see through the nonsense called forgiveness as it's taught in mainstream. I'm very grateful for being aware of being able to question things without needing an, an outcome. And that's been the big push on uh, from... Um the new age movement was this big forgiveness thing. I remember watching Oprah in the day and it's like, oh, you just have to forgive everybody. The only person you're hurting is yourself. Well, like I said earlier, you need, you need to rem clear the hurt, but you don't need to forgive. Those are two different things. So release. when you release it, that's the key. Is you need to release the pain that they gave you or tried to put on you. Release that. That does not mean you have to forgive. No. especially somebody like I, at the beginning, if they're not yeah. sorry and they're going to continue the same behavior and from their heart centered, they're not sorry and don't realize the harm they're doing. You do not need to forgive them. No, you don't owe anybody anything. No, but if it's heartfelt, like you said, because we've all made mistakes. I've made a ton of mistakes in my life and I would hope that I was forgiven because I truly from the, from my soul, I'm sorry because it came from a place of ignorance at that time. And yeah. we weren't shown. So we're breaking down three timelines, past, present, and future. We're looking in the past of how we've been misled, led astray, made choices that weren't always in the best interest of ourselves and others, whatever that is. We're applying it to the future, the present to see what how we got shaped into being the people we are today, what works, what doesn't. And we're looking at what makes a beautiful human being going forward so we can transition into the future. So we're really collapsing the past, present, and future timelines. Really, yeah. it's, it's remarkable. Anybody who's doing the inner work right now, hats off to you, man. You've got courage beyond belief because this is not an easy ride. No. <laughs> I, I no, think that's, just, I was going to say something really cute, but it just came to me is, you know, the acupuncture meridians, those are your meridians like timelines. So when you're collapsing, you're coming into the center, which is actually the conception and then the governing your past life and your conception to move forward. That's why you need to be alkaline to get the energy to push forward. That's why we're steaming. Because those timelines like liver gallbladder meridian, that's like a past life. So you're bringing all these things that you've learned and timelines, as Patty Broussard used to talk about when we did it at Project Incension, how they came in with ideas of Christianity. They actually sent in religions on each one to keep people blocked off. So when you're coming back into that center point, zero point, you're coming point. into you. You're coming yes. into the divine feminine or, you know, they talk about being a tribal woman or into the clan. You've come back into the connection to go back up and the observer point all of that right Absolutely. in your higher self it's 
actually, when you talked about how they created Christianity and all that, last night, I believe it was yesterday, or no, maybe the day before, and Christine mentioned it, that Scott McKay had Bishop uh, Larry Gator, and he actually did a awesome. really, did you see, it was excellent, wasn't it? When he started to talk about how that was all built. Go in and take a look. Patriot Street Fighter 6, it was on yesterday, or his Rumble channel. Okay. Yeah. It was very good. It was very yeah, these, good. These uh, are the guys that need to be brought back into that. So I'm actually connected to Scott. So. And, and it's okay that they're where they're at because nobody says we all have to be there and get to center first. We're getting there as we're growing, coming to center. We're coming out of center. We're growing. We're learning more. Everybody's doing an amazing job out there who's trying to get information out to people. But just like we all have our wheelhouses, they might turn around and say, we want women out here to talk about what's really going on because they can't talk about the sexual abuse as, as deep as we can they can't talk about the emotional trauma so they're going to need women who can talk about it but it doesn't mean they're not going to learn and it doesn't mean they're not going to talk about it so i really want to make sure that we don't we're all perfect exactly where we are if you don't like what somebody says don't listen to them but don't bash them either yeah I think you know that, that's really want to, that's really where we need to go right scott mckay's doing a great job he's yeah. had all kinds of crap happen to him in his life who's to say that his path is supposed to be my path or somebody else's path. Let him have his own path and trust he's doing the best he can. And he's doing a great job. I want, I want to point out something that most people have never seen. He only did this twice that I've seen, but he has now brought in what he called the Constitution, which was really based on the First Nations, the mm -hmm. Iroquois Confederacy, by the way, which again should have been based on the, the clan mother's laws, but <laughs> that's the other thing instead of founding fathers, founding mothers. But anyway, what happened, and I have the original founder of Bloodlines, by the way, they call the builders or the progenitors. So what happened is that he put that scroll into what they called the Chinupa and the Canupa. So he showed what the peace pipe meant, and he actually turned it in where they've got pipestone, and they would, again, put the pipe in when they were getting the ceremony for the marriage. But what happened is that he showed it where he had it custom made. There's an ax on the back end. So take a look at Scott's thing on the very back. He shows you there is a, a peace pipe, and he brought it back to show people we are the First Nations because he's got First Nations blood. He said, and we have offered you peace. You have refused it, and now we're going to use the axe. The hatchet comes out, and that's where the term tomahawk. It's not just a muscle and a missile. <laughs> the guys, again, the tribal men and the tribal forces are coming to take over. And he's letting them know he's not forgiving anybody. He's no. holding the line just very yeah. much. You'd be the best you can be. He's a great role model for a lot Reed, of young men. Reed's sitting there in plain sight. He's he's shown it up twice. He's shown you what the Patriot Street Fighter is, but it's the actual. And because the clan mothers have directed the guys, we are going. We They've refused to listen to the peace. Remove them. And that's what your uh, military martial law, the tribal law, is now taking over. And I think that's what we're feeling in the air. We talked to, the, I don't know yes. if you were on right from the beginning. And I was like, I can feel something like it's sizzling. It's sizzling. Yeah. And uh, something big is about to, I don't know when, and I don't know how, but it's coming. coming. Yeah, I agree. And every and time it's okay. I say it, I get another batch of goosebumps. So it, yeah, I'm right <laughs> on that one. I, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, don't know is, when, don't know how, yeah. but it's soon. It's, it's soon, coming. Soon, soon, and let's be ready for it. Be the best version of ourselves so we can help exactly. other people when they wake up and just be able to help them. Get and I mean, that's why this forgiveness thing was is really critical because these people who are doing heinous things, yes, they have no regret. They have no remorse. None. We have no zero. Actually, we have an obligation to ensure we do not forgive this. Yes. We have an obligation to not forgive this. Set the this standard can never with that. happen again. Yeah. This is not acceptable behavior and we will never allow it again. And mm -hmm. that's why this is key that no, it isn't turn the other cheek when a child's life is never. at stake. It is not turn the other cheek when they are ready to take your head. Okay. That is not forgiveness. We must be warriors. Yes. I got it. <laughs> And that's yeah. why we've all got it. <laughs> all new age. Everybody is good. Everything is love and light. Bullshit. You know what? You call evil evil, and that's all there is to it. And yes. you take them out. That's it. There you go. <laughs> and that's what, what the plan is. Go. Just <laughs> that's the plan. Out. And you know what? Let's be very clear to what they were trying. Some of these patriarchs were, and again, patriarchs, patriot, patriarchal. We're trying to get into you. Trust the plan in God. We trust. God is an old word from the 
bloodline, by the way, of chaos, which is just like, you know, the old Roman and Greek, it's a bloodline. Okay. That's not going to happen here. And so that's what the gods, those are the Illuminati, by the way, those are the arch negative bloodlines and in trust, trust the plan. I don't think so. Cause trust means to truth to fuck. So guess what? We're untrusting. We have to uh, build ourselves from the bottom up. Doesn't matter. If, if policies change, great, but we have to build, rebuild ourselves. Like yeah. I said, past, present, future, we have to rebuild. So we're going to do Absolutely. this. There's yeah. no way we're not. Okay. So we keep saying we're going to end this, but I we know. never do. <laughs> Thank you. Happy Friday, guys. And have Happy a wonderful Friday. weekend. I will talk to you both soon. Okay. We'll set this up Bye. That's good. Bye. -bye.